On day one, I spawned into the seasonal forest as a rad poison dinosaur. Whoa, I'm awesome and deadly. Nobody is gonna mess with me, even though I've only got 10 hearts. But that turned out to be totally wrong, because as quick as a flash, an intimidating axe-wielding pillager appeared right behind me. He didn't look intimidated by me at all. Hi, Odin. Haven't seen you around these parts before, kid. Hey, I'm Zozo. It's uh, nice to meet ya. Wish I could say the same. Name's Pillager Pete. The meanest, nastiest son of a gun you'll find around here. I'm gonna give you three seconds to run, and then I'm gonna destroy you. But why? I don't even know you. Three, two, one. He didn't hesitate for a second. Pillager Pete attacked, and all I could do was run for the hills. I didn't even have weapons. There was no way I could fight him. But as I ran away, I heard Pillager Pete yell. Get him, boys! That's when a gang of Vindicators jumped out of the trees and started chasing me. It seemed like this Pillager Pete guy had a whole team working for him. But why were they after me? In the end, I managed to outrun them and hid behind a clutch of trees until they stopped looking. I need to figure out what's going on here, or my poison goose is cooked. On day two, I felt relieved, having narrowly escaped the scary Pillager Pete and those lethal gangs of Vindicators. But I couldn't afford to worry too much about it. Instead, I needed to get myself a snack or my hunger bar was going to start eating itself. Lucky for me, I was able to find some apples that sated my hunger. Do dinosaurs eat apples? Who knows, I'm not a paleontologist. That's the name for someone who studies dinosaurs, by the way. But before I could even let my dinner settle, one of the Vindicators popped out and prepared to attack me. Pillager Pete sends his regards, you poison little loser. With no weapons, I couldn't fight back. I just ran off and avoided him until he disappeared. Then, when the coast was clear, I decided it was a good time to start working on a shelter. I broke down a tree and made a wooden pickaxe. Then, I mined up some stone and used it to build some better tools. A stone pickaxe and a stone sword. And with my spare stone, I built myself a basic one-room base where I could rest for the night. I'll figure out how to defeat all those villains tomorrow. On day three, I ventured out of the seasonal forest to the inhospitable cold of the shattered glacier. Heesh, I wouldn't want to build a summer home around here. Still, there might at least be some cool loot for the taking. But thanks to my cruddy luck, instead of finding some awesome loot, I found a dangerous zombified piglin. Hey, I'm the only weird, nasty creature that's allowed in these parts. You're cramping my style. And if you cramp my style, I'll crush you! He attacked me viciously, causing me to run away. There was no way I could survive a fight with him at my low level of experience. Why is everyone so aggro here? I don't get it. Why is it so hard to make friends? But I may have gotten lucky in the end, because I happened upon a friendly weaponsmith wandering the glacier. Well, hello there, me good lad. I'm Wally. Wally the Weaponsmith. As the name suggests, I like making weapons. What are you doing out here? Oh, just exploring. I need to find some cool gear to fight off that nasty Pillager Pete guy. Wait, you said Pillager Pete? Oh, Sonny, now that's a whole can of worms. You know about Pillager Pete? Oi, I've known him for years. Then you better come with me. I need all the help I can get. From day four to day five, I returned to the base with Wally the Weaponsmith. He seemed like a really useful guy to keep around. What kind of room would you like, Wally? I'm easy, my lad. As long as I've got somewhere warm with a roof over my head, I'll be happy. I worked on mining some stone and andesite and started putting together a new room with a bed for Wally the Weaponsmith to stay. When I was done making it, he decided to go and relax inside the room and make himself at home. But I wasn't able to relax just yet. A Vindicator assassin suddenly popped out of the trees and fired a blow dart at me. Hey, how come that didn't work? I'm a poison dinosaur, man. You can't use poison darts on me. Oh, well, I'll destroy you with a sword then. Not if I destroy you first. We both drew weapons and I battled bravely until, in the end, the Vindicator assassin was defeated. And even better, I got to pick up his blowgun and the darts. I bet this will be even more lethal in the hands of a poison dinosaur like me. 
From day six to day eight, I went out further into the seasonal forest to gather up some more resources, namely sheep. Wool can be used for so many things after all. I found a gang of sheep and was able to shepherd them back to my base, where I built a basic pen to keep them in. But when I went back out to the seasonal forest to gather even more sheep, I found something I didn't want to find. Or rather, that something found me. Long time no see, Zozo. It was Billiger Pete, and he was back with a deadly new surprise for me. Throwing axes, freshly shopping for that killer edge. Figured you might be able to help me with some target practice. I'll throw, and you play the target. Before I had a chance to think up a poisonously clever comeback, he tossed an axe right at me, and I was forced to run for my life. He just followed me, laughing, throwing axe after axe. When one hit me, I lost almost all of my hearts. I needed to get out of here. Running away already, Zozo? The fun's just getting started for me. I knew I wasn't strong enough to beat him yet. Instead, I hid behind a tree and dug a hole into the ground, which I hid inside while Pillager Pete ran past me. I stayed in that hole for the rest of the day, wanting to make sure he was gone before I climbed back out and went back to my base. Jeez, what a day. From day nine to day 10, I woke up to the weaponsmith brimming with excitement. He had some awesome things to show me. Zozo, me boy, I wanted to thank you for giving me a place to stay in these difficult times. For starters, I made you a statue. It's a bit of a work in progress, but I think when it's done, it's gonna be amazing. Wow, thank you, Wally. I can't wait to see it. I followed him outside and saw the start of a statue that Wally had been building. It was an astounding sight to see. I couldn't tell you what it was yet, but I knew it was going to be amazing. How about you, viewer? What do you think it's gonna be? Let me know in the comments. I can't wait to see if you get it right. But it wasn't just the statue. Wally had some other good news too. Oi, take a look around the base, Zozo. I made a training area for you to work in. And I plan to create a lot of weapons for you too. And I made a furnace to make it easier for me to forge for you. I also made a storage room to keep the weapons and resources. Wow, Wally, that's amazing. Let's build a campfire tomorrow night to celebrate. From day 11 to day 12, I stood by a campfire outside my base as the evening turned to dusk, hanging out with Wally the Weaponsmith. Wally, you told me you knew something about Pillager Pete. I think now is a pretty good time for you to share that information, bud. Huh, you've got me there, lad. I suppose now is the right time to tell you. I was worried if I told you before, you'd be discouraged. Tell me, I believe I can take it. I used to be a bounty hunter. He got so good at it. In fact, he hired a loathsome gang of vindicators to join him on his quests. But they got bored doing jobs for people. They'd take out their targets, they'd take out the people who hired them, and they'd take out anyone who they saw along the way. These days, they mostly just go after people for the challenge. They enjoy it. And I guess he thinks that the mighty poison dinosaur is a good challenge? Why, lad? He'll hunt you down if it's the last thing he does. So you gotta make sure it is the last thing he does. So no pressure then. That's why I didn't tell you before. From day 13 to day 15, finally knowing just how dangerous my opponent was, I decided that I needed to settle some old scores and prove my worth. That's why I was making my way through the shattered glacier once again, ready to take on one of my earliest and deadliest enemies, the zombified piglin. I approached with my stone sword at the ready. It was time to finish this. Oink, oink! Ready to get your poison butt kicked, dino? It's Zozo. But yes, I guess I am also a dino. It's confusing, but don't worry about it. Let's just fight! And so, we did! The zombified piglin and I duked it out, and I gave it my all, until in the end, my power and my poison were too much for him! The zombified piglin was defeated, and I had enough XP to level up, getting bigger, stronger, faster, and now having 30 whole hearts! But wait, I can feel my power growing! What is this? Boom! I fired a powerful poison blast! Oh yeah, I have a feeling that this new power is gonna be useful. From day 16 to day 19, I descended into the mining cavern I'd worked so hard to find. I'd never been so grateful to be in a deep, dark hole. Okay, iron, 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 where are you? I kept searching until I found a rich vein of iron ore and used my pickaxe to dig the ore out. I collected as much of it as I could and then prepared to leave the cavern. Wait, 
What's that weird noise? Suddenly, an arrow hit me, and I saw a bunch of skeletons walking towards me. Most would have been scared, but not me. I was just excited to try out my new poison blast ability. Time to see how my poison affects bones. I unleashed a few poison blasts, and the skeletons immediately started dying. I'd never felt so powerful. Pillager Pete is gonna be in real trouble next time we see each other. I gathered the rest of the iron and returned back. With the Skelly Boys defeated, I went back to my base and gave the iron ore over to the weaponsmith. Great work, lad. I've tapped you some fine weapons with the furnace. Take this iron sword and iron pickaxe and use them to make yourself even stronger. Thanks, weaponsmith Wally. I can't wait. From day 20 to day 22, I woke up to the weaponsmith panicking in my bedroom. Wally, why'd you come in here? Can't you see I'm trying to get my poison dinosaur beauty sleep? No time, lad. The pillager, he's here, and he looks like he's ready to battle. You need to be ready, or he's gonna destroy us all. Jeez, this is one heck of a wake-up call, Wally. I yanked myself out of my bed and ran out to meet Pillager Pete at the door. He looked every bit as well-trained and lethal as before. Well, well, well. If it ain't the toxic twerp, I'll need to teach a thing or two. I'm learning on my own, Pillager, and everything I've learned is going to make me even stronger than you. I love your confidence, kid. It's more fun to destroy someone when they think they're gonna win. Without warning, the pillager threw an axe at me, wounding me, but I couldn't afford to back down. I started attacking Wally with my iron sword, striking again and again, slowly wearing him down. In the end, I hit him with a poison blast, and that stopped him in his tracks. You, you dirty little snake. You're always gonna rely on your poison to win, aren't you, you little coward? You're not worth my time. I'll see you next time, Pete. And when I do, only one of us will remain. Pillager Pete disappeared in a puff of smoke, and I was left feeling the thrill of battle and the belief that I truly had it in me to defeat that diabolical pillager. From day 23 to day 26, I decided to craft a brand new weapon for myself, the Poison Sprayer. This would allow me to concentrate my most powerful poisons into an area of effect spray attack. This weapon will no doubt serve me well when Pillager Pete comes knocking. I'll show him who uses poison to win fights, nobody else but me. And if you want to show your friends more of my most epic battles, remember to search ZOZO so you can find more videos. From day 27 to day 31, I went to check on Wally the Weaponsmith and see how his work on the statue was progressing. How goes it, Wally? Hi there, Zozo. The statue has a new section complete, thanks to my craftsmanship. Want to come see it? Sure, if you insist. The statue was now of an impressive size, and I still couldn't see what it would become. For the next part, I need some more framed glass. That could be tricky to come by in the large quantities I need, even for a weaponsmith like me. But I did hear of an abandoned mine in the Sierra Valley, which might have a vein of it. Say no more. I'm off to collect this special glass so you can make more progress on this glorious statue. I gathered my weapons and departed from the base to begin my quest for the stacks upon stacks of glass needed. Before long, I was deep in the Sierra Valley. The area was crawling with vindicators who somehow must have known I'd be searching for resources in the area. Didn't take long for some to spot me and run in. You made a big mistake, embarrassing Pillager Pete like that. He's gonna want us to destroy you slowly for what you've done. And you made an even bigger mistake telling me that. The poison sprayer should keep you creeps at bay. And it did. I defeated multiple vindicators using the poison sprayer, then used my poison blast on another couple and finished them all. From day 32 to day 35, I ventured farther into the Sierra Valley and encountered another vicious vindicator. You can't scare me away, Zozo. I'm braver than my buddies. Rather than facing it head on, I used a poison dart for my blowgun and then switched the poison sprayer to inflict the poison status. The poison damage gradually weakened him, especially when I also used the poison blast. The combination of all this was able to finish him off quickly. This valley is more dangerous than I thought. For vindicators, oh yeah, I'm the most dangerous thing here. That's when I saw a wandering trader traveling through the area. Traders are known for having all sorts of rare items, so immediately I started to think that I should do business with the guy. I'll bet he even has the framed glass I need for the statue. I approached the trader and asked if I could purchase any of his wares, especially if his inventory happened to include framed glass. I do have some of those, but I won't just give them away for free. Okay already, name your price. 
I need you to rescue my librarian, who has been kidnapped by the Enderman. I have a couple overdue library books in my inventory, and if the librarian is gone, I'll never be able to return them. That's it? A rescue mission? Easy peasy poison greasy. I got this. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled to the base of the Enderman who kidnapped the local librarian. The fate of a thousand library cards hangs in the balance. I may be the toughest poison dinosaur around, but even I support access to good reading. I looked in through one of the windows of the base and saw a cage with the librarian held captive inside. The Enderman was pacing around the room, looking all kinds of sinister. Please let me go. Running a well-stocked library is a service to the community, and I can't do it if I'm trapped in here. That's exactly the point. Without you taking care of the library, I'll be able to keep my overdue library books forever. You fiend. Other people might want to read those books. Then they can pry them from my pitch-dark, freakishly long arms. This Enderman is seriously evil, but it was a good thing that he wasn't very careful. I could see the key to the librarian's cage on the wall. I can't use an area of effect weapon like the poison sprayer because I might poison the librarian. So I'll use a bunch of blow darts on the Enderman first, then use my iron sword to end the fight up close and personal. I prepared some poison darts for the first step of my plan and proceeded to enter the structure. From day 40 to day 43, I snuck up on the Enderman and surprised him with a couple poison sprays. Who in the heck are you? Just a poison dinosaur who is here to rescue the librarian. Nothing personal. It's about to be personal because I'd rather fight to the bitter end than return any of my library books. You have some strange priorities, Enderman. But by all means, keep talking about them so my poison has more time to damage you. You lousy, I'm going to make you extinct. The Enderman charged in swinging, but I knew the poison was taking its toll. So I pulled out my iron sword and started swinging right back. We fought in melee and I quickly gained the upper hand. With a few daring slashes, I overwhelmed the Enderman and finished what the poison started. Bye-bye, Enderman. I guess it was your end you should have been worried about. The fallen Enderman dropped the key, which I used to unlock the librarian's cage. Thank you for saving me. I returned to the wandering merchant and told him what I did. He then provided me with the material for the statue. Side quest taken care of. Oh, yeah. From day 44 to day 49, I returned to my base with the framed glass that Wally the Weaponsmith would need to continue work on the statue. Here you go, Wally. Don't say I never do anything around here. Why not? I like the statue building to me. Thanks for doing the tough part. Trust me, Wally. I'm capable of a whole lot of things. And to prove what I said, I used some of my extra stone, wood, and iron to construct a perimeter wall around the entire base. The base had gotten to be quite large, so it took a while, but the wall was a lot of fun to build and would make a great defensive barrier too. Man, I worked up a real poisonous sweat getting this wall built. Now that it's done, I'd better go see if Wally has made any progress on the statue in the meantime. Back to the area where the statue was being constructed and saw that it was much closer to be completed than last time. That framed glass that I had collected really shined in the proper place. Zozo, you're staring at the statue again. It's not gonna be finished today, you know. I know, Wally. I'm just taking a break to admire it. From day 50 to day 53, the perimeter wall I just built around the base was attacked by a gang of Vindicators. And as usual, Pillager Pete was the one sending them. Tear down that wall. We've got ourselves a catch to bring in. I was sure they were talking about me, so I drew my blowgun and started to fire poison darts at them from the wall. Here I am. Did you miss me? Because my darts won't miss you. A few of the Vindicators were poisoned by my attack and climbed up the broken wall to fight me more directly. I drew my iron sword and slashed them down. Then I heard Wally crying out in the distance. Hey, on on me. I'm not going anywhere with you by choice. Oh no, I was wrong. Wally was actually the target they were after this time. The Vindicators had surrounded him, and by the time I got over there, he'd already been kidnapped and taken away. I order half of you to stay behind and see if you can get that poison dinosaur. He's the real prize. As Pete escaped, the others tried to take me on, so I switched my poison sprayer and hit them with all of my strongest poisons. Can't catch me, and I'll get Wally back after I whoop all of you with my poison powers. With some poison blasts, I wiped out the remaining Vindicators one by one. The experience of defeating them caused me to level up, obtaining 50 hearts and some radical poison claw attacks. 
From day 54 to day 57, I repaired my base and built it back better than ever, leveling up the architecture to the standards of my new, bigger, powered up self. I'm here on my own now without Wally, but I won't be lonely for long. That guy is too handy of a weaponsmith to let him stay captured. I just need some help from one of my other friends. I went to the Sierra Valley where the wandering trader liked to hang out. And as expected, he was there. Well, if it isn't my favorite customer, what can I do for you today? Pillager Pete and his force of former bounty hunters took my weaponsmith. I'm looking for any information you might have about where their base is. Oh, I've got information. A trader keeps track of all sorts of business. Those bounty hunters operate in the far north, where they keep a prison for their most hard to catch targets. Back in the day, they would turn them in for money. But now the prison is more like a living trophy cabinet, a place where the creatures they capture are forced to stay forever. This has to be where they've taken Wally. You said this prison was in the north, but north is a pretty general direction. Where in the north is it? It's so far north that you'll enter the snowy tundra biome before you find it. Search around in the reaches of that place, and it won't be too much farther. Well, that's exactly what I needed to know. Thanks, wandering trader. Wait, aren't you gonna trade me something? You never named your price. Better luck next time. From day 58 to day 62, I was digging in the mines for diamonds so that I could soup up my gear for the journey north. Iron rusts, but diamonds are forever. In the depths of the cavern, I ran into a few ghasts that weren't too happy to see a poison dinosaur making moves in their territory. Too bad for them that my poison claws were so strong that I could take each one down in a single blow. Guess that's the ghast we'll see of those guys. <laughs> With those nuisances out of the way, I was free to keep mining until I struck diamond. I grabbed all that I could carry and brought it to the crafting table where I fashioned some brand new diamond gear. First, a diamond pickaxe, and then a diamond sword. The journey north will be much less treacherous with these. From day 63 to day 66, I took a moment to observe the half-complete statue that Wally the Weaponsmith hadn't yet completed. If he were here, Wally would probably be working on this right now. I need to get him back so he can complete it. Also, under my tough and cool exterior, I really did miss my friend and hoped that I would be able to find him and save him from Pillager Pete. And if you hope to find more of my videos, you should subscribe to the channel so that all my new uploads will appear right there on your YouTube feed. From day 67 to day 70, I had been traveling for a while before I reached the snowy tundra. This is it, the far north. I made it. Nothing is going to keep me from saving Wally. I could see the old bounty hunter prison standing tall among the slopes. It was guarded by a patrol of Vindicators, but I wouldn't let them stop me from breaking in. I fired my poison darts at the Vindicators to draw their attention towards me, inflicting the poison status condition in the process. Ah, the poison dinosaurs come all the way to the far north. Let's send them packing. I don't think so. I'm here to check in and save my friend. I drew my diamond sword and hacked and slashed straight through all the approaching Vindicators. The way forward was now totally clear for me to enter into the prison and find Wally the Weaponsmith. From day 71 to day 74, I was traversing the many treacherous floors of the Bounty Hunter prison. I was searching for Wally, but I couldn't see any sign of him. All of the prison cells I did see were empty, and on one of them, the bars were broken off. I wonder who was in there. The same menace who is now out here. I turned around to see a zombified piglin running towards me down the hallway. I was captured by Pillager Pete, but now I enjoy living at this prison because I get to eat all the other prisoners. You eat the prisoners? That's nasty. But you didn't need a weaponsmith, did you? No. Why? Do you know one? You know what? Forget I mentioned it. Also, take this. I poison blasted the zombified piglin. He aggressively responded with brutal melee attacks. Instead of using my diamond sword, I used my poison claws to give the zombified piglin a poison status effect and deal enough regular damage to take him out. He dropped a map that revealed the location of Wally's cell. On my way down to it, I discovered a treasure chest, which I opened. Inside was a full set of diamond armor, most likely confiscated from a former prisoner. I equipped the armor and kept on moving. From day 75 to day 78, I reached the prison cell where Wally was being held. Wally, you look like you've had better days. Zozo, never expected to see you again, but here you are to bust me out of the prison. Wally, listen, I realized something while I was on my journey to the far north. Even though people like Pillager Pete have made life difficult for me, I haven't given up on making friends. I might be strong now, but it takes real strength to let your guard down around other people. 
That's a really mature thing for you to say, Zozo. I appreciate it. Now let's get out of here. I mined through the bars of the prison cell with my diamond pickaxe, and the two of us went in search of the exit. Unfortunately, we were intercepted along the way by Pillager Pete. What's this? Are we gonna start a new hunt? I'm looking forward to the challenge. Not as much as I am, Pete. I'm going to defeat you. I waved Wally on and confronted Pillager Pete myself. I'd catch up with my best friend later. For now, it was payback time. I attacked with my poison claws while Pillager Pete struck with his weapon. Both of us were losing health fast, but if I could poison him, I'd be able to swing the battle in my favor, which did the trick. Ha, you're poisoned. This is my win, Pete. That's what you think. From day 79 to day 84, Pillager Pete absorbed my poison and proceeded to grow larger and much stronger. I warned you against using poison. If you introduce a sneaky tactic to the game, then it's gonna be used against you. I'll poison Pete now. Infinitely more toxic than my original form. Your status effects won't be able to bring me down now. Wait, that means you're immune to poison? That's right. I had to adapt to all kinds of strange targets during my bounty hunter days, and you've been on my list long enough for me to become your worst nightmare. Go ahead and run. I'll give you a head start because it's more fun that way. I ran away from the prison and down the snowy tundra, knowing that I couldn't beat him in my current state. I may have rescued Wally, but the poisonous pillager Pete was still coming for me, and I needed a new plan. From day 85 to day 89, I safely returned to base after traveling for who knows how long. It seemed that Pete's head start was still in effect, so I went to Wally for some advice on how to arm myself against the former bounty hunter's new poison immune form. Sounds like what you need is a weapon enchantment for your diamond sword. I've got you covered with this fire aspect enchantment that should enhance the damage you deal to him. I'll keep thinking while I complete my work on the statue. For now, you should use the enchantment. Thanks, Wally. I'll keep on thinking about how to win as well. This works better if we both put our heads together. I went to the anvil and applied the fire aspect enchantment to my diamond sword. Now I can inflict a burn on Pillager Pete. But I knew that alone wouldn't be enough to beat him. So I decided to go back to Wally and see if he had more ideas. I made my way back to the statue area to find it complete. An incredible statue of a poison flask. I'm more than just my poison. Putting it on display and acknowledging it really reminded me of how far I'd come in my poison dinosaur journey. Zozo, I came up with another idea. You should head back to the Sierra Valley and find the potion of power that the Enderman once hoarded to himself. You're full of great ideas, Wally. That's one of the many reasons we're friends. From day 90 to day 94, I set out for the Enderman's base and found out the Vindicators were there already. They must be looking for the potion of power. Split up and search the place. The Enderman may have outwitted us long ago, but we can still reclaim his stuff now for the boss, including the potion of power. I knew it. The Vindicators all noticed me and began to attack. But unlike their boss, these guys weren't immune to my poison. I hit them with poison blasts, poison darts, and my poison sprayer until all of them were taken out. I searched through the base until I found a chest containing the fabled potion of power. I better save this for a key moment. With my enchanted sword and the potion of power in my inventory, there was only one more kind of gear I needed in order to have my showdown with Pete. Luckily, I knew exactly the man who could get me special items. From day 95 to day 97, I invited the wandering trader to my base and gave him a bunch of spare materials in exchange for the best suit of armor that he had in his inventory. Here you go, Zozo! A full set of custom netherite armor, perfectly sized for a poison dinosaur! Excellent! I'm going to try it on! I equipped the netherite armor, and now I had all the right stuff I needed to be a match for Pillager Pete in his positively perilous Poison Pete form! I'm going to put Pete in his place! Good luck out there, Zozo! You'll always be my favorite customer! On day 98, I kept all of my best gear close by as I remembered all the tough times I went through to get here. I learned so many new ways to use my poisonous power, but I also built things and made friends. Life can be really fun, even if there's a lot of difficult moments in it. And some of the most fun that we can have together is on many more adventures through the overworld. After this, search for more Zozo videos so that you can keep on having fun and remember to leave a comment about what you want to see next. On day 99, I went back to the snowy tundra to give Pillager Pete the fight of his life. 
I was decked out in my netherite armor, holding my diamond sword enchanted with the fire aspect, and ready to drink the potion of power when the fight began. I'm here, Pete. Let's end this little game. Pillager Pete stepped out in his adapted form, looking as vicious as ever. You didn't want to run anymore? Instead, you came straight to me. I'll mess you up so bad, you'll wish you did run away. That's the thing, Pete. I'll never wish I ran away from this fight, because I'm not going to live my life in fear of bad people. I'm going to beat you and live the rest of it with the good people I chose to call my friends. Don't you see? There's always some new enemy out there, some new challenges to overcome. Living an easy life? That's nothing to aspire to. It's everything to aspire to, and whatever comes my way, I'll keep fighting for that easy life, by any means necessary. He charged forward and hit me, but my netherite armor reduced the damage of his hits enough that I could strike back on equal footing. I swung my fire aspect sword and dealt a lot of damage, both regular and fire. We kept on trading blows with my powerful form and gear keeping me in the fight. Pillager Pete had hunted me across the overworld for a long time, but today, he didn't stand a chance. With my poison fireball, I destroyed him so he would never hunt down anyone again. On day 100, I was living the easy life I had dreamed of back at the base with the others. The trouble with Pillager Pete was done, and for now, I could keep poison to myself. Wally decided to share some words of wisdom with me since today was our first real day of freedom. Sometimes the best weapon we have when the going gets tough is a good attitude. I couldn't agree more, buddy. There we were, friends together, united against a harsh and difficult world that was looking a little bit better every day. On day one, I spawned in as a mighty dinosaur. Well, not really. I was pretty small and only had four hearts. I'm just a baby. Uh -oh. I looked around and noticed there weren't any other dinosaurs around. And then I noticed I was in an enclosure with tall walls. Hey, that's not fair. I want to run around and be free. I ran around looking for a way out. I couldn't find anything. Just then, I heard a bell go off and I saw some food being lowered into my cage. I was hungry, but I still needed to find a way out. The food lowered to the ground and I ate all of it. Then I got a brilliant idea. I held onto the hook as it was brought back up to the edge of the wall. I jumped on the edge, free from my enclosure. Then I jumped off and ran toward the jungle. Dinosaurs are meant to be free. As I was running, I saw a human in a car trying to chase after me. He started shooting at me. Ah! I managed to jump over a large tree that had fallen down, but the car couldn't get through. One human threw his weapon down in anger and yelled at me. We'll get you back. Mark my words. What a weird guy. I found a little cave and decided to hide out there for the night. I would go looking around for more dinosaurs in the morning. On day two, I woke up feeling very hungry. Man, I'm gonna need to find more food if I wanna survive out here. I quickly began chopping down some trees and managed to make a crafting table. With that, I made some wood tools. I feel a bit more prepared now. I explored further in the jungle and found some sheep. I hurried and got their meat before they could run away. I really needed to gain my strength back. Mmm, yummy. As I was enjoying my food, I heard a snap of a twig. I turned and saw a small ocelot trying to hide behind some bushes. Wow. Hey, do you want some food? The ocelot peeked out and slowly came and grabbed some meat for me. Thank you. Of course. What are you? I'm a dinosaur. You won't eat me, will you? No, I won't. Have you never seen a dinosaur before? The ocelot shook his head. I know that park over there has dinosaurs, but I've never seen one until today. Interesting. I wondered what that park was all about and why there weren't any other dinosaurs on the island. Thanks again for the food. You take care of yourself. You too. He ran off into the jungle. I need to figure out what's going on here. On day three, I gathered some more materials to make a little base. I knew that the humans would probably be back and I wanted to be ready for them. Once the base was finished, I went out to look for some food. Boy, am I hungry again. I managed to find a bunch of sheep and tried to herd them back to my base. But then, a bunch of alligators came and started attacking me. Get back, you nasties. I used my sword and my pure strength to fight them off. And before I knew it, they were all gone. Just then, I felt a surge of power, and I grew into a teenage T-Rex. Hey, I have more hearts now. I finished gathering the sheep and led them back to my base. I hurried and set up a pen for them. What a good day. On days four to five, I made my way back to the park to scout it out. 
Maybe I could learn more if I watched what the humans were doing. I was searching around and found some rusty shears. These might come in handy. Just then, I saw a bunch of humans driving toward me. I ran through some rocks and dirt hills to lose them, but they just kept following me. I roared at them, and the force almost toppled their car over. That's new. This caused one human to fall out of the car. The driver didn't stop and they left him. He got out his weapon and started shooting darts at me. Hey, stop it! I roared again, and the force made him fall over. I was starting to feel the effects of the dart. Ouch! I felt pretty woozy. What was that? The human pulled out a walkie-talkie. Dr. Holland, I have subdued test subject A. Come to this location to retrieve him. I couldn't let the humans take me, especially not this Dr. Harland. He sounded like bad news. I mustered up my strength and smacked the human with my tail, sending him flying over a cliffside. I gotta get out of here! The sleeping dart definitely was doing its job, but I managed to get back home before completely passing out. I'll have to find that doctor tomorrow. On day six to eight, I woke up, still feeling a little groggy. That wasn't super fun. I need to be sure not to get shot again. I went out and grabbed some food before heading out to gather more supplies. I needed some better weapons to defend myself. I went further into the jungle and spotted a small mountain. I started to mine out some of the materials and set up a crafting table to make myself a new stone sword, pickaxe, and shovel. Nice! I was about to make my way further up the mountain when I saw some little jaguars hanging out. They're kind of cute. But that was short-lived, because they started to jump and bite at me. Come on, guys, I'm not food. They didn't back down, so I used my new sword to fight them off. It only took a minute before I defeated them all. Thank goodness for that, otherwise I would look like Swiss cheese. I ate some food to heal, and I headed further into the jungle. On days 9 to 10, I journeyed past the trees to the edge of the island. It was beautiful. Too bad there were humans trying to hunt me down. Just then, I heard a screeching of tires and saw a car coming towards me. Wow, I was just thinking about the humans, and then they show up. Maybe I have superpowers. I started to think of it raining sheep and nothing. Well, it was worth a shot. I started to run away from the car, but they caught up to me pretty quick. The guy I had seen earlier who had thrown down his weapon was inside. He must have been Dr. Harland. You can't run away from me now. You're mine. Go away. The car soon caught up to me, and the humans had me cornered. Ah! A heavy iron cage made out of chains pinned me down. Thank goodness for that tracker. We didn't realize it was attached to you until later, because Jones never came back. But at least he did his job right. Dr. Harlan plucked something off my leg. It looked like a dart, but then I noticed a little blinking beacon. That human, Jones, must have shot me with a tracker a few days ago. I felt so silly. I don't belong with you. I belong out in the wild. Dr. Harlan just laughed. <laughs> I was confused and desperate. I needed to get out. Just then, I felt a whoosh of air, and part of the cage was broken. I saw a blur of pink whizzing past me. Run, Zozo! I ran, following the pink blur back toward my base. When we finally stopped, I realized the pink blur wasn't just a blur. It was another T-Rex. The dinosaur jumped down from behind cover and scared me. I knew there were other dinosaurs on the island. I'm Zozo. The dinosaur smiled at me. I'm Zoe. I'm your sister. Sister? Wait, back up. What? We're twins. I was put in a different enclosure, though. I heard that you escaped, and everyone was freaking out, so I took my chance when they went looking for you and climbed out as well. They really need to work on their security system. But hey, good for us though, right? Right. So, you're super fast? Zoe nodded her head and zoomed in a circle, demonstrating her speed. Wow. What can you do? Uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to be able to do something? Zoe looked a little uncomfortable. No, not really. Oh, wait! I can move things with my roar. It's like a sonic power. I showed it off. That's really cool! Do all dinosaurs have powers like us? No, I guess we are just special. Zoe seemed like she wasn't telling me something. I was going to ask her what she knew, but then I heard her stomach growl. Hey, how about I get you some food? You must be starving. That'd be great, actually. Thanks. We went to the farm and ate until we were both full. Zoe must have not eaten for a long time because she had double of what I had. Wow. How about you live here? It's safe, there's plenty of food, and I'd love for you to stay with me. Zoe looked really happy about that, and she readily agreed. Sounds like a plan. On days 11 to 12, I made an area for Zoe on the base. I worked hard to give her everything she would need in order to be comfortable. 
Soon, it was all ready to go. She seemed really happy to have found me, and I was happy to be reunited with the sister I never knew I had. I decided to go exploring a little bit to improve the base and the weapons that I had. While I was out, I came across a flock of birds nesting on some stones. They were beautiful looking woodpeckers. Hey, could I have some of that stone? They seemed friendly enough, but then out of nowhere they started pecking at me! Seriously? I tried to smack them, but they kept flying and then dive bombing me. I need to get out of here! I ran into the trees, hoping to get some coverage. They stopped attacking, but I really needed that stone. What am I gonna do? I looked around the jungle and noticed some long vines hanging from the trees. I had an idea. I gathered some of the vines, a couple small sticks, and a bunch of rocks. This should do the trick. I snuck back to the rock formation and attacked them with my new weapon, the slingshot. Take that! It worked perfectly, and before I knew it, all the birds were gone. Nice! And I have some food to take back to Zoe. I gathered the bird meat and started mining out the rocks. It took a while, but I finally got enough to make some new furnaces. This is awesome! I headed back to the base and showed Zoe my new weapon. She was super impressed and even asked if I could make her one. I happily agreed. She was super excited and shot with the slingshot towards the lake. Once that was done, I used some wooden logs to build a wall surrounding the base. It was all starting to come together. Yes. On days 13 to 15, I had a weird dream. I was back in the park, but it looked like I was in a lab of some sort. People were poking and prodding at me. I saw Zoe and she was chained down. Let her go! Then the dream changed and Dr. Harland was there. He was presenting us to a large crowd of humans. He had trapped us in enclosures and we were chained. The humans stared and laughed at us. It was horrible. I woke from the dream with a start. Whoa, that was terrible. I went to go find Zoe. I told her about the dream and asked her what it meant. She hesitated. We are lab experiments, Zozo. We aren't natural dinosaurs. Dr. Harlan grew us in the lab, giving us special abilities. Why would he do that? He's not just a doctor. He also owns this entire park over there. He genetically engineers dinosaurs for human entertainment. That's awful. But you and I are special. He made us specifically for a new exhibit he's working on. This was a lot to take in. We were being hunted by an angry doctor and his goons. It felt like the odds were definitely against us. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to find that Zoe wasn't in the base. Zoe! I looked everywhere and called out to her, but I couldn't find her. I wonder where she went. I looked around the entrance and noticed some footprints. They looked a lot like mine, but were smaller. These must be Zoe's footprints. I followed them, leading away into the jungle. They stopped at the mouth of a cave. Oh no, I hope Zoe's okay. I tried to quietly creep in the cave, my slingshot at the ready. I heard some muffled screaming, along with some maniacal laughter. That doesn't sound good. I went further down, and I saw Zoe. She was all tied up. There was also a monkey tied up next to her. Around them were a bunch of big, hairy spiders. Oh, gross. I charged, shooting rocks as I went. The spiders looked alarmed and tried to scurry away, but I managed to fight them all off. I hurried and freed Zoe, just as she yelled at me. Zozo, look out! I turned around, and there was the biggest spider I had ever seen in my life. Granted, I was only a few days old, but still. You're taking my dinner. That's my sister. She's not food. I slung some rocks at the huge spider before charging at him. He smacked me with his legs, and I was nearly down to my last heart when I remembered my roar. I let out a big roar. The force made the spider fall over. I then attacked with my tail and weapons, and within no time, he was gone. Victory is mine! All of a sudden, I felt power course through my body, and I leveled up into an adult T-Rex. Nice! I had way more hearts, and my tail could swing faster now. I helped finish freeing Zoe and the monkey. Thanks for rescuing me. I'm Crew. I'm Zozo. I looked over at Zoe, and she was shaking. Are you okay? That was so scary. I went out this morning before you got up, and I was ambushed by those spiders. I tried to roar, but they tied my mouth closed before I had a chance to call for you. I'm glad I found you. Being spider food wasn't really a part of my grand plan. Zoe laughed and crew joined us. You're from that park over there. I knew there were dinosaurs, but nobody has seen any. Yeah, we managed to escape Dr. Harland, but he is kind of crazy. He wants to bring us back so he can make money off of us and all the other dinosaurs. That's awful. How many more dinosaurs are there? We don't know, but they don't belong in there. We need to help them escape. Crew thought for a minute. I might be able to help out with that. Really? How? 
This island has been inhabited by dinosaurs before, a really long time ago. There was a T-Rex like you guys that had a special item that could ward off the humans. That sounds awesome. Do you know where it is? No, sorry. Legend says it's on the island somewhere, but nobody has found it. This was good news. Maybe we could make the humans leave for good. On days 20 to 22, Clue came with us to the base. He seemed to really like us and wasn't scared like most animals were. He was also really funny and would ride on our back sometimes. Once we got back to the base, we tried to get settled in, but then a bunch of jaguars showed up, trying to get our sheep. Hey, there's enough food for all of us. You don't need to steal from us. They didn't listen and just continued to attack. With our combined strength, the jaguars were gone in no time. We made some improvements to the base, including a treehouse for crew to hang out in. He really seemed to like it. Hey Zoe, would you want to help me with something? Yeah, sure. What is it? I want to make a statue. I want the humans to know that they can't mess with us, and I want all the dinosaurs to know that there is hope to be free. That sounds awesome, Zozo! We chatted about the design and started on the base of the statue. Can you tell what it's going to be? Also, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here on our adventures. On days 23 to 26, I woke up to the base being attacked again. They broke through the wall. I guess the Jaguars had some reinforcements and didn't like that they couldn't get to our sheep. Come on, guys, really? Zoe and crew joined me, and with their help, we defeated the Jaguars in no time. I noticed that one of them had dropped something, so I picked it up. It was an iron sword. Whoa, neat. I swung it around and nearly jabbed Zoe with it. Hey, watch it. Sorry. I looked around the base for a minute. Maybe we need to make some changes to the base so that it's safer. Zoe agreed and we went to work. We worked on expanding the walls and making our own areas larger. We ran out of supplies pretty quickly, so I headed out to gather some more materials. I also would really like some more iron so that I can have some better weapons. I explored for a minute before finding a large cave. I delved deeper and deeper until I found some iron ore. Yes. Perfect! Just then, a bunch of bats came out of nowhere and tried to swarm me! Ah! I hurried and started smacking them with my new sword. The last few that evaded me, I shot with my slingshot. Nice! I really like having a sword. I mined the rest of the iron and hurried to craft myself an iron pickaxe, axe, and an iron helmet. This will be perfect. I left, still feeling accomplished. I had a new weapon and a new tool. I felt like I was on top of the world. On days 27 to 31, I went to Crew to chat with him about the special item that would help me defeat the humans. He was chilling in his treehouse. I was too big to fit, so we just talked from a distance. Well, the legend says that thousands of years ago, many dinosaurs lived on the island in peace. Then one day, the dinosaurs saw a boat approaching. They had no idea what it was, so they didn't fear it. But then the humans landed, and they began to immediately attack the dinosaurs. They took over the island, and started to chop down all the trees and pollute the land. One T-Rex, his name was Ignatius the Great, he sacrificed his most prized possession to the volcano gods in order to gain the legendary item to ward off the humans. What was the item exactly? It was an amulet that granted him awesome power to grow to ten times his size. Whoa, that is awesome! Right? So he used the amulet to defeat the humans and protect the dinosaurs. So what happened to him in the amulet? I'm not sure exactly. That's all I know. What an interesting story. I hoped that it was true. It could be the answer to all my problems. On days 32 to 35, I thought some more about what Crew said. I really need to find that amulet. And if it's on the island, how hard can it be to find it? I decided to look around for something significant that could possibly help me. While I was venturing further into the island, I came upon a group of ocelots. One of them recognized me. Hey, it's that dinosaur that helped me get food. He ran up to me and started talking to me. His family seemed a little reluctant, so they stayed further back. What are you doing? I'm looking for the amulet that was lost on the island. Do you know anything about it? My little ocelot friend shook his head, but his dad piped up. That amulet corrupts all who hold it. You don't want it. Why do you say that? The dinosaur that held it, Ignatius the Great, began to use the power to unfairly rule all of the dinosaurs. The volcano gods were angry. So they willed the volcano to erupt, taking out all the dinosaurs. That's awful. Well, that's what happens when you mess with power you shouldn't have. I couldn't agree more. I flipped around to see Dr. Harland. How did you find me? It's not that big of an island. I knew I would find you eventually. 
I tried to run away, but Dr. Harlan shot a dart at me. It got me right in the leg, and I immediately felt woozy again. Oh no, I can't pass out again. Everything was starting to get fuzzy. It's okay, we'll take care of you. Then everything went dark. On days 36 to 39, I woke up back in my house. Huh? Hey, how did I get back here? I went outside and saw the Ocelot family hanging out with Zoe. Look who's awake. My little Ocelot friend ran up to me. Zozo, you're okay. What happened? Dr. Harlan shot you and then you passed out. We worked together to move you. We met your sister outside. She had been looking for you and was worried. She helped us to carry you in. Wow, you guys are the best. Thanks. No problem. I don't even know all of your names. The Ocelot officially introduced himself as Marty. The rest of his family had M names as well. Melissa, Mo, Miley, you get it. Now that you're feeling better, how about we make some room for our new friends? Sounds like a plan. Zoe and I worked on making an enclosure for the Ocelots. I could tell they were scared to be living out on their own. By the time we finished, I could tell they were really happy about it. I decided to talk more with Marty's dad, Marvin, about the legendary amulet. I asked him where it might be, and he shook his head. All I know is that the legend says it was buried with Ignatius somewhere on the north side of the island. That's where his home was. Everyone claims that he was wearing the amulet when the volcano erupted. Interesting. I would have to travel a long way to go looking for it. But before I went back out, I got to work on the statue. It was coming along pretty great. Yes. I was excited to finish it. So, was your guess right? On days 40 to 43, I went out to go looking for more iron since I hadn't found that many deposits nearby. I went north and found a pretty big cave. As I entered, I saw a bunch of snakes slithering around. Not today! I quickly shot them with my slingshot, hit them with my sword, and also used my roar to send them flying into the lava. I was starting to feel really powerful. I journeyed deeper, and sure enough, I found a huge deposit of iron as well as coal. Yes. I made myself a little crafting table and set up a camp for myself in the cave. With the iron I had collected, I made myself all new tools and weapons. I am the mightiest of T-Rexes! Nobody can stop me now! On days 44 to 49, I journeyed to the north side of the island in search of the amulet. I was dropping through the jungle when I heard a scream. I snuck forward to see a bunch of alligators who had trapped a toucan. It looked like they were about to eat her. Hey, stay away from her! I dropped out from my hiding place and the alligators snapped at me. I guess they didn't like me intruding on their dinner plans. They started to attack me, but with my sonic roar and powerful tail, they were gone in an instant. Thank you, mister. I'm Zozo. I'm Greta. I thought for sure I was going to be alligator food. Well, I'm glad I was around. I've been hearing about the dinosaurs on the island. What brings you over here? I'm looking for the lost amulet of Ignatius the Great. Oh, that's a tricky one, that is. It's supposedly here on the north side of the island, but... What? Well, it's kind of complicated to explain. I think it would be easier if I just showed you. Okay, sounds like a plan to me. On days 50 to 53, I followed Greta further into the north side of the island. We were about to enter a clearing when Greta stopped me. Is that chanting? Yeah. I looked through the trees and saw a temple of some sort. There were a bunch of other toucans gathered around something on a pedestal. Hey, they have the amulet. Wait, Zozo. I didn't listen and I dropped through the trees toward the birds. They immediately squealed in delight and started bowing. Um, what's going on? Oh, great and mighty one, you have heard our call and you have come to retrieve what you have left behind. I looked on the pedestal and noticed that it wasn't an amulet. It was a... Is that a foot? Yes, great Ignatius, it is your foot. We have been saving it for you. I looked behind me and saw Greta was super embarrassed. These must have been her family members. The crazy side of the family, no doubt. Um, yes, I have been missing my foot. Thank you for taking such good care of it. They continued bowing as I went up and grabbed the foot. It was definitely from a T-Rex. Um, my humble toucans, where did you find my foot? One hopped forward eagerly. Oh, yes, we found it over here. We journeyed on a path leading toward a large rock formation. The foot was just sitting right here, oh holy one. Thanks, do you mind if I look around? Do as you wish, great one. 
The toucan left, and Greta flew up a moment later to rest on my shoulder. I should have warned you. I don't come around here anymore because they are all a bunch of crazies. I mean, who worships a foot? I just laughed. It's fine. It was exciting, to say the least. I began digging at the rock formation, and sure enough, I found more bones inside. This must be Ignatius! Yes. We managed to uncover all the bones, but there wasn't an amulet in sight. If he wasn't wearing it, where did it go? All the stories said he was wearing it. This was beginning to feel like a wild goose chase. I gathered all the bones, and we headed back toward the base. On days 54 to 57, Greta and I made it back to the base. She didn't want to be with her crazy family, understandably, so we made a little nook for her. She seemed to really like it. Hey, Zozo. It was Crew. He came over to me. What's up? I'm running a little low on food. Do you think you could grab me some more bananas? There's a tree nearby with some in it, but there are also some spiders in there. No problem. I went to the tree Crew was talking about and immediately saw the swarm of spiders. Yuck! I used my slingshot to make them fall out of the tree, and then I attacked them. They were no match for my roar, and soon enough, they were gone. Sweet! Now Crew can have all the bananas he could want. I used my roar to make the bananas fall out of the tree, and I gathered them for my friend. He was ecstatic to see all the food I had gotten for him. Wow, thanks, Zozo. Wait here for just a minute. Crew went to work. In his treehouse, he started mixing a bunch of ingredients together in the mixing basin. And before I knew it, he had a big loaf of banana bread for me. Where did you even learn to bake? And where did you even get a mixer? I have my ways. Here, hope you like it. I ate it, and it was actually delicious. Mmm, yum. Thanks, crew. He jumped up and down in delight. No problem. On days 58 to 62, I worked on the statue for a little bit. I was nearly done when I heard a scream from down below. The base was being attacked by some humans. Oh no! I hurried to run down to the base and noticed that all my friends had been shot with sleeping darts. The humans were trying to take them away. You let my friends go! I roared with all my might and the humans focused their attention on me. They tried to shoot me, but I dodged them. I managed to take out a few of the guards and then went to chase the rest away. They got scared of me and ran off. Good riddance. I hurried to help my friends get back to their homes when I noticed that Zoe was missing. Zoe! I looked outside the base and I saw her lying on the ground. She didn't look too good. Uh -oh. Zoe, let's get you inside so you can sleep. They didn't hit me with a sleeping arrow, Zozo. They hit me with a real bullet. What? Why? I heard one of Dr. Harlan's men say that they just needed one dinosaur for the exhibit. You. So I charged him. And he shot me. Oh no, Zoe. It's okay. The hunter that shot me, Brett, said that they were going to get the amulet from its secret hiding place. Zoe weakly handed me a map. They dropped this. Hurry, Zozo. Take care of the rest of the dinosaurs. Protect the island. And with that, my sister died. No! On days 63 to 66, I used the map that Zoe gave me to track down Brett. They won't get away with this. I traveled to the north side of the island again, past the temple, and down into a large cave. There didn't seem to be anybody around, but then I saw a pool of water with a large glowing squid in it. There were a bunch of humans attacking him. Stop hurting innocent creatures! The men jumped in surprise as I attacked them. In only a matter of seconds, they were defeated. Thank you, Ancient One. Of course. I knew you would all be back someday. It was only right that the dinosaurs ruled this island again. Do you know where the amulet is? The squid nodded and pointed down further into the tunnel. I'm afraid the rest of the humans have already started heading down that way, though. How did they know to look for you? Dr. Harland was my friend. When he came to the island, he discovered me and studied me. I told him of the amulet in the cave but he wasn't interested in it at the time. It wasn't until recently that he wanted to retrieve it. I guess he didn't want a chance you finding it and overpowering him. He ordered his goons to destroy me. I'm so sorry, that must have been heartbreaking. You can't trust those humans. They only want power. They'll do anything to get it. I'll go retrieve it. Good luck to you, friend. And with that, the squid swam further into the pool and disappeared. On day 67 to 70, I went deeper into the cave, which then opened up into a huge underground chasm. This must have been Ignatius's lair. 
Then I saw Brett and some other goons grabbing a chest from an alcove. That doesn't belong to you. Brett dropped his chest in surprise. He turned and sneered at me. It don't belong to you neither. I charged, ready to strike. The men got out their weapons, ready to shoot. Don't hurt them, just put them to sleep. The doc wants to save them for later. I managed to dodge all the darts and I used all of my strength to swing and hit the humans. I finished off his men and then went to attack him. Brett looked a little uneasy as I got closer, so then he pulled out his dart shooter. I don't want to hurt you, dinosaur, but I will if I have to. He fired his weapon, and it wasn't sleeping darts. It was a stun blaster. Ouch! Electricity pulsed through me, and I fell down. Hard! Just give up. It'll be easier. Then I blacked out. On day 71 to 74, I woke up. My bones and body aching. Then I remembered. The chest! I looked in the alcove, and it wasn't there. Shoot! Brett must have taken it while I was out. I felt awful as I made my way out of the cave and up into the jungle again. It was super slow going to get back home, but eventually I made it. On day 75 to 78, I entered the base. I was so exhausted and just wanted to be alone, but my friends came running up to me. Zozo, you're okay. We were asleep and when we woke up, you were gone. Where's Zoe? I told them all about what happened and they stood in shock. We are so sorry, Zozo. Zoe was a really good friend. I felt awful. I told them I needed to rest, and I went into my house for a little while. It wasn't until long until I heard screaming and shouting. I hurried to run outside, only to find Brett in the base, trying to shoot my friends again. What are you doing here? I need your blood, dinosaur. Give it to me. Ew, gross. No. I roared at Brett, causing him to fly backwards into the wall. I smacked him with my tail and sword, easily defeating him. I then felt a surge of power, and I leveled up into a full-size T-Rex. My roar could demolish anything, and I had tons of hearts. What did he mean he needed your blood? I have no idea, but that was definitely creepy. I looked and saw that Brett had dropped some things. I was hoping it was the amulet, but it was just a key card and a painting. Huh? The painting had some glyphs of humans shooting a dinosaur with a dart shooter and then growing to be huge. Have you seen anything like this? No, it just looks like something the old humans must have left. They probably just thought that defeating a dinosaur would grant them power. I guess Brett thought so too. Probably why he came back to hurt me. Creepy. I looked at the key card a little bit more closely. It had the park symbol on it and a label saying Site B. Huh? What is Site B? The park is Site B. Site A is the abandoned site down the hill. There's two? Yeah, Site A was abandoned because it was too small. Now it's just storage. There must be something important in there if Brett has a key card to it. Must be. On day 79 to 84, I traveled to Site A to go exploring. I was hoping the key card for Site B would work here too. As I approached the front gate, I took out the key card, put it in the key card scanner, and the gate clicked open. Nice! I followed the path and arrived at the main building that rose through the jungle, high into the sky. I slowly went inside the building and saw lots of boxes and cobwebs. The place looked like a mess. This place has been completely abandoned. I explored the building and saw an interesting roller coaster through the window. It goes straight through a dinosaur skeleton exhibit. What in the world was happening in this place? All of a sudden, I heard a noise from a back room. I approached and looked through the window, only to see an alligator looking through the cabinets. I wonder what she's doing. Then she saw me and charged at the glass. She then opened the door and ran towards me. I quickly backed up and she snapped her teeth at me. What are you doing here? I'm looking to see if there was anything that could help me defeat Dr. Harland here. What are you doing here? The alligator looked at me. She paused for a moment and started speaking slowly. I'm also trying to get to Dr. Holland. He's been running tests on my family in order to make new dinosaurs. I need to rescue him. We can work together. Have you found anything useful here? Uh, yeah, there's some sort of weapon downstairs, but it's too heavy for me to carry. Maybe you can carry it. I started to go down the stairs toward the control room. As I was about to enter, I felt something push me down the stairs. It was the alligator. Hey, what was that for? You aren't supposed to be here, dinosaur. You've been extinct for years, and now you just expect to rule the whole island? The alligators are the real predators here. She snapped her teeth at me and almost got me. 
Hey, I'm just trying to survive here. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. She ignored me and kept snapping her teeth. I backed up and then used my roar to push her back. I hit her a couple more times and then after only a minute, she was gone. I wonder if there was anything down here or if she was just lying. I looked around the room and sure enough, it was mostly just trash. Then I noticed a trap door. I was too big to go all the way down, but I did notice some diamonds and other materials, wow. but they were out of reach. I looked around and there were a few more diamonds just laying in the corner of the room. Yes. These will definitely come in handy. I grabbed them and headed back to the base. I would definitely need some help scouting out the rest of the secret room. On days 85 to 89, I went back to chat with my friends about what I had found. Wow, I knew that the alligators on the island were super territorial, but that's just crazy. What weirdos! I know, right? But would one of you come with me back to the room? Can't fit down there, but I would like to see if there is anything else of value. Yeah, sure. Crew and I headed back to side A, and he checked out the secret room. He came up in a few minutes, super excited. There's a tunnel, and it looks like it leads into the Site B park. This was great news. Now I just needed to figure out a way to fit down there. Crew explored some more and said there was a bigger tunnel opening near the river. That's perfect. I'll go in that way once I'm ready. On days 90 to 94, the monkey gave me the diamonds, and I used them to craft myself some better weapons. I didn't really have enough diamonds to make armor that would fit me, so I just made weaker diamond armor with a few chunks missing from the armor pieces. It would be enough to cover my weak spots. Yes. I tried it all on, and I actually felt really cool. Not only am I a strong dinosaur with superpowers, I now also have some protection. I knew that I was one step closer to defeating Dr. Harland and freeing all the dinosaurs. Yes. On days 95 to 97, I finished the statue. It is in honor of Zoe. As I looked up at the finished statue, I felt a sense of hope and strength. I knew that I would get the amulet and fulfill my destiny. On day 98, I said goodbye to all my friends before heading out. Take care, you guys. I'll be back, I promise. They cheered me on as I left the base and headed out to the park. On the way there, I noticed a plane overhead and it was dragging a sign in the sky. Subscribe? Hey, that sounds like a good idea. You should do that so you can follow along on some of our other adventures. On day 99, I went to the river where the tunnel opening was. I broke the bars and headed inside toward the park. It was dark for a little while, but then I started to see light. The tunnel led to an enclosure with all kinds of other dinosaurs. I approached the gate and roared to break it open. Whoa, it's the T-Rex. They all gathered around me. Are you gonna free us? Yes, this tunnel leads to the outside world. I'll go open up all the other enclosures so that we can all be free. The dinosaurs whooped in delight, and then a bunch of darts started flying. The humans came out of nowhere and started shooting at us. Uh -oh. Run, you'll be safe. They all started running into the tunnels as I roared at the humans. I trudged through the park, defeating the guards easily. I continued to the other side of the park. On day 100, I was loose in Jurassic Park. There were a bunch of humans running around in panic. I tried not to step on them. I just wanted to find Dr. Harland. Then out of nowhere came a bunch of humans with weapons. They shot, but I dodged and roared and swung my tail at them, sending them flying in different directions. They quickly ran away, and I continued through the park to the big building in the center. I smashed through the doors, and sitting on a pedestal was the amulet of Ignatius. I went to grab it, but I felt a dart hit me. I flipped around and saw Dr. Harland with a large shooter. Come quietly, and I won't hurt you. No! I grabbed the amulet and felt a huge surge of power. I turned into a giant T-Rex with massive teeth and a mighty tail. So be it. Dr. Harlan backed up into the lab and closed the door. I heard some whirring, and then he appeared in a large robotic suit. I didn't want to hurt you, but you have ruined my park. You are a liability now. He shot at me with some tough shooters, but they didn't hurt me as much since I was so powerful. Yes. However, he soon started throwing bombs at me, which were not so easy to avoid. Uh -oh. We exchanged blows, and I almost thought that Dr. Harland was about to end me. Ah, that hurt! Ha! I dodged that one! You will not take me down that easily! Take that! Ah, you dirty lizard! That hurts! But I was also doing some damage. I could tell some of my roars were hurting his mech because sparks started flying. Finally, his mech started smoking. Now I was doing some real damage. Then I used my sonic roar and sent Dr. Harlan flying. 
the suit crumbled into pieces, and Dr. Harland was finally defeated! I made my way throughout the rest of the park, releasing all the dinosaurs back into the wild. They all seemed super happy. Once we all reached my base, I saw my friends cheering for me. Life was back to the way it should be. On day one, I spawned into the Badlands as an awesome lava dinosaur! I may only be a baby, but I think when I grow up, I'm gonna be the coolest creature of all! But being that cool comes with certain drawbacks. You attract a lot of attention. That must have been why a terrifying soul blaze suddenly appeared in front of me. Behold, tis I, the ultimate being, the Lord of Souls, and I wish to add yours to my collection, Zozo. Wait, how do you know my name? I know all. I see all, and in time, I will be able to do all. I will absorb your power, little lava dinosaur, and with it, I will become unstoppable. My power? I don't even have any power yet. Oh, but you will, Zozo. You will. Over the next 100 days, I will challenge you. I will hunt you. Through these trials, I will make you strong, and then, when you reach the height of your power, you will be mine! Before I could try to talk him out of this wild plan, he fired an energy blast from his supercharged Soul Blaze rods! I ran as fast as I could, terrified by what he planned to do! I want to get stronger, but if I do, will I just be playing into the Lord of Souls' hands? This is gonna be a tough one! On day two, I ventured out deeper into the Badlands to try and see what I could find. There's still a lot I don't know about this place. It's called the Badlands, but it seems pretty okay to me so far. I've got to be careful though. I only have 10 hearts, so I want to stay out of trouble. Suddenly, I heard my stomach growl. Oh, that's right. I've been alive for almost two days, and I haven't eaten yet. I better find some snacks. I wasn't sure what kind of food I could find in the Badlands, but as I was looking around, I spotted something red on the ground. Hey, apples, perfect! An apple a day keeps the Lord of Souls away. That's the saying, right? I ate the apples and felt much better with a full stomach. Good luck didn't last long. I saw some Vex Piglins scowling at me and flying toward me. Face us, Zozo. The Lord of Souls sent us to test your strength. No, I don't wanna. Too bad. Time to fight! They got even closer and started to attack. I did my best to defend myself, but I had never fought anyone before, and these guys were way too strong for me. All I could do was run away from those terrifying Vex Piglins, and in the process, I ran into a spider llama. Follow me. These piggies can eat my dust. On day three, the spider llama led me to a campfire further out in the Badlands. It was a huge relief to find a cozy, safe place to rest for a while. This is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mostly mean sleeping and hanging out with my buddy, the Fire Guardian. I don't see a Fire Guardian. Until I did see one, standing by the fire. That's because I'm over here, guarding this fire. Hello there, baby lava dinosaur. I see you too are being forged in fire. May your flame burn brightly. Thanks, I'm Zozo, by the way. It's nice to meet you, Zozo. My name is Dennis. And this spider llama who brought you here goes by the name Zack. I'm grateful for both of you. Those Vex piglins cornered me in a totally unfair fight. They were working for this awful soul blaze. Big scary guy. Maybe you know him? Unfortunately, I do. The Lord of Souls means to add you to his collection, I assume? Yes, he said he's going to wait for me to become strong. Then he's going to take my soul and steal my power. So I decided I'm not going to get stronger at all. That way, he won't get me. I'll just lay low and stay out of trouble. I know it seems frightening, but you must seek strength and progress anyway. But you can't allow the Lord of Souls to steal that strength. Instead, you must use it against him so that he never takes another soul again. Oh, jeez, that sounds like a lot of work. It will be, but you will have help. No dinosaur is truly alone in this world, not when he has friends. Go with Zack and build your first base. We'll develop from there. Okay, then it's decided. I'll become the biggest, strongest lava dinosaur I can, and I'll defeat the Lord of Souls before he can use my power to become unstoppable. It's the right thing to do. From day four to day five, I got to work building my base. First things first, to build my base, I need some tools. I'm gonna need to gather some wood. Can I even touch trees without setting them on fire? I sure hope so. Luckily, me being a lava dinosaur didn't have any effect on the trees, and I was able to gather some wood. Then I used that wood to craft a wooden pickaxe. Next, I'll get some stone. 
I used the wooden pickaxe to gather enough stone to craft a full set of stone tools, including a stone sword. My first sword. Check me out. I'm not just a weak little baby dinosaur anymore. Now I'm a baby dinosaur with a sword. But I didn't have time to practice sword fighting. I needed to build a place for me and Zack to stay. I built a small house and added a room for Zack and another room for me. There we go. Home sweet home. Nice digs. Simple, but nice. We can always add more, too. Zack went inside, and I was able to follow him when a skeleton ran up and started attacking me. Luckily, I had my new stone sword, and I was able to defend myself. I was still pretty new to fighting, but I managed to defeat him. After the fight, I started to feel funny. Not in a bad way, but different. I grew a little bigger, and I felt stronger. My hearts increased to 30. Yay! As I yelled, I saw a blast of fire shoot out of my mouth. Cool! Fire breath! I'll have to be careful not to accidentally burn anything down when I talk. But this is awesome! From day 6 to day 8, I decided that it was time for me to explore the area outside of the Badlands. I can't just hang around here forever. I've got to get out there and learn more about being a lava dinosaur. Like, what's the difference between a lava dinosaur and a dragon? Is it that I don't have wings? I gotta find out! I'd also stop the Lord of Souls from stealing my power. And that too. I traveled to the Black Forest. I thought Black Forest was a type of cake, but I don't see any cake here. I guess life is disappointing sometimes. Oh well. I was distracted by the lack of cake when I saw a poor old fisherman being attacked by a nasty thorn wolf. I ran at the wolf with my sword and attacked. It took a while to defeat the thorn wolf and it snarled at me, snapping its jaws. It was pretty scary, but I managed to fight it off. Thank you, young dinosaur. I was afraid that blasted wolf would tear me limb from limb. Yikes, I'm glad he didn't. You need your limbs. I sure do. Can't reel in the fish without them, which is what I was trying to do when I was attacked by that beast. But if you think that thorn wolf was bad, you should see the other guy. The wolf guy, that is. Say, if you manage to defeat that mongrel, maybe you can defeat this monster too. Could you give it a try? Sure, I can try. Just show me where to go. From day 9 to day 10, I followed the fisherman to a place deeper in the Black Forest. Is it just me, or is it getting really creepy in here? It's definitely not just you. You can probably sense the thorn-corrupted wolfman that's taken over this part of the woods. Which is a shame, because some of the best fishing is over here, and I can't get to it with him attacking anyone who gets too close. That's not fair. I'll do my best to make sure you get your fishing spot back. Up ahead, the thorn-corrupted wolfman appeared. He had nasty matted fur and wild eyes. Ow! Who's trespassing in my forest? It's me, Zozo. You, huh? Well, I was getting pretty hungry. I guess you'll make a nice snack. How about you try some fire breath? I used my fire breath to attack, but the wolfman didn't even flinch. He came back at me and slashed me with his claws. Ow! Oh! This might be too tough of a fight for me. I ran back to the fisherman and away from danger as quick as I could. Quick, let's get out of here. You're just giving up. No, I'll come back when I'm stronger. But if that's going to happen, we need to survive another day. Come on. The fisherman agreed, and we both ran out of there until we couldn't hear the wolfman's bone-chilling howls anymore. From day 11 to day 12, I led the fisherman back to my base. You can stay here until the Black Forest is a Wolfman free zone. Well, thank you, but is there any room for me? I don't want to be rude, but your home looks pretty small. Well, I can fix that. Just wait right here. I'll build you a room. I got to work and built a nice room for the fisherman to sleep in. When I was finished, I saw that he wasn't where I left him. He had added another room to the base too. What's this? Just a wee token of my appreciation. I thought you might need more room for items and such, so I built you a storage room. I hope you'll find it useful. You didn't have to do that. There is very little we truly have to do in this world. It doesn't mean it isn't worth doing. I'm glad there are nice people out there, and not just the Lord of Souls and his minions. Stay far away from him, my friend. He would love to steal a power like yours. That's what he told me too. I'm going to do my best to defeat him so he can't steal people's power anymore. Be very careful. I've heard rumors that he's been waiting for the chance to absorb the strength of a fire-breathing dragon. And as a lava dinosaur, you're probably the next best thing. Yikes! 
Talk with the fisherman inspired me to keep working on upgrading my weapons, so I went to a nearby cavern to get some mining done. I gathered some iron ore, which I took back to my base and smelted into iron ingots. Then I used them to make an iron pickaxe and an iron sword. Spiffy! Hey, with another new person staying here, we're going to need more supplies. I should find some animals. I spotted some sheep grazing nearby and decided that they would be perfect. I built a sheep farm for them and herded them into their pen. This place is really coming together. From day 13 to day 15, I was out of ideas for how to get stronger, so I decided to ask Zach for some advice. Hey, you're a tough guy, right? Sure am. Why, did someone say I wasn't? I'll fight them. No, 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 I, I just wanted to ask you what you think I should do to get stronger. What should I do? Well, everyone's journey is different, little dude, but I do know that facing your fears is a good way to grow. Maybe try that. Well, I was pretty scared in the Black Forest. I guess I can go back there. I'll just make sure I don't run into the Wolfman. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't mess with the Wolfman. They're always looking for a fight, and they're no fun at parties. I traveled back to the Black Forest, keeping an eye out for the Wolfman. Gotta face my fears. It's so creepy in here, though. Why is this forest so scary? As if to answer my question, some Vex Piglins popped out. Maybe it's because you're nothing but a weak little baby. Oh no, it's those Vex Piglins again! Yep, we've decided you're a waste of the boss's time. It would be better to just get rid of you and find a better target for him. Guess I have to fight you then, and face my fears! I used my fire breath to attack, then ran at them with my new iron sword. They fought back, but I dodged them. After a little bit of fire breath and sword action, I was finally able to defeat them. I did it! Zack was right! I do feel stronger! Oh, look! A health potion! They must have dropped it! I picked up the health potion and drank it. My heart increased to 60, and my claws got sharper. Cool! I have a new ability, Claw Attack. From day 16 to day 19, my exploration took me out of the Black Forest and into the Cypress Swamplands. So nice to change out those old trees for some new, different trees. And those different trees brought me good luck because I spotted a book and picked it up. The title said, Better Living Through Exposition. What does that mean? Better take a look inside just to see. Okay, it says that the Lord of Souls hides somewhere dry and hot. So definitely not anywhere nearby then. That's good to know. Why read about it? You'll be winding up there soon enough. Vex Piglins? But I just defeated you! No, those are some other Vex Piglins. There are dozens of us. Dozens! And we're all coming after you. Well, this worked before, so I guess I'll try it again. Fire Breath Attack! I used my Fire Breath, but it wasn't quite enough to defeat them. So I followed it up with a few swipes of my claws. Claw Attack! Turns out, the Vex Piglins were no match for my new and improved claws, and I managed to win the battle! From day 20 to day 22, I headed back home to my base. On the way, I fought a mean-looking spider to test out my new abilities. It was easy to beat, way easier than the Vex Piglins! Okay, now I need to get back into the mines and see if I can find some more materials. Zozo needs some iron armor! I don't know why I talked about myself in third person like that. Let's go! I climbed down into the mining cavern and searched until I found some iron ore. Back at my base, I smelted the ore and used the iron ingots to craft an iron chest plate. This thing makes me feel pretty tough. Between this and my new abilities, I think I can finally fight the Wolfman. With my new confidence, and more importantly, my new chest plate, I traveled back to the Black Forest to look for the thorn corrupted Wolfman. I followed the sound of his howl until I found him. When he saw me, he growled. Back again? Good, I was starting to get hungry. And you're bigger now. Even better, I could use a good meal. He came at me with his claws, but I had claws too. I used my claw attack, and he looked shocked at how much damage it did. That didn't stop him though, and he attacked me again. But my iron chest plate protected me from his fangs and claws, and I was able to get the upper hand and win the fight. Splendid. I turned around, and the Lord of Souls was there! You're getting stronger, I see. Soon you will be strong enough, and your power will make me invincible! Or I'll use it to defeat you! Impossible. You were born for this very purpose. A prophecy foretold that the power of a fire-breathing dragon would allow me to conquer all. But I'm a dinosaur! Close enough! 
I didn't want to stick around to hear what else he had to say, so I got out of there as fast as I could. From day 23 to day 26, I ran away from the Lord of Souls and headed back to my base. I can't stand that guy. At least I have good news for the fishermen. Speak of the devil. You do? I love good news. Yes, the Wolfman is finally gone. You can go back to your favorite fishing spot again. Thank you so much, Zozo. Next time I catch a fish, I'll name it after you. Okay. Next, I went back into the mining cavern to find some more iron ore. Once I had it, I smelted it and used the ingots to craft an iron helmet and boots. Pretty snazzy stuff. While I was admiring my new armor, the fisherman came to talk to me again. Before I head out to catch some fish, I built a perimeter wall for the base. Something to keep us all a little safer here. Just my way of saying thanks for getting rid of that man-eating wolf man. No problem. Whoa, it looks great. From day 27 to day 31, I decided to return to the Cypress Swamplands to see if I could find anything else useful. I found that book here before. Who knows what else I might stumble on? Turns out, the answer was a fire elemental. And he stumbled on me. Excuse me, are you the dragon that got rid of the Vex piglins who were here earlier? I'm a dinosaur. But yeah, that was me. That was really impressive. They were causing a huge mess around here. But before you managed to get them, they got to my house and destroyed it. Any chance you know where I could stay for a while? Follow me, I'll show you the way to my base. I escorted the fire elemental back to my base. Then I collected some fluffy wool from my sheep. You know what, sheep? I think this place is looking a little bit boring. What do you think? The sheep didn't say anything back, but I could tell they agreed. So I put up some decorative banners. Much better. From day 32 to day 35, Zack came to me to ask for help. What's going on? It's Dennis. He's facing some kind of menace. I think that Lord of Souls sent some creeps to mess with him. Oh no, let's go right away. I traveled to Dennis the Fire Guardian's campfire, and by the time we got there, there were Vex Piglins all over the place, and I couldn't see Dennis anywhere. You will pay for this. I rushed in and blasted the Piglins with my fire breath. Then I shredded them with my claw attack. I was able to defeat a bunch of them, and once they were out of the way, I saw Dennis fading away. Oh no. Zozo, you came. Thank you. But I'm afraid it's too late for me. Be strong. Help the others. Save the world. And just like that, he was gone. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to the Black Forest so I could see how the fisherman was doing at his fishing spot. Before I could get to the fishing spot, a ghost miner drifted out from between two trees and approached me. Well, I'll be. You look like a strong youngin' who might just be able to help out an old timer like me. What do you say? Sure. What do you need? Back before I was a ghost, I was attacked by a deep spider around these parts. Suppose you could destroy that spider so I can finally get my revenge on the critter? Sure. I searched the Black Forest until I found the deep spider. It was pretty easy to defeat with just a blast of my fire breath and a few swipes of my sword. Then I went back to the ghost miner. I did it! hoo -hee. Feels good to let my soul be at rest. Thank you, Sonny. Speaking of souls, better be careful of yours around that soul eater fella. If he snatches yours, there's no getting it back. He'll absorb all your power and leave nothing but a husk behind. I'll make sure to remember that. Thanks. From day 40 to day 43, I returned home to my base. When I got there, I saw that someone had added a nice new lounge area outside. Wow. This looks so nice. It's the perfect place to curl up with a good book and relax. I'll definitely do that once my quest is complete and the Lord of Souls is dealt with. I wonder who did this? It was me, little dude. Oh, cool. But why? I don't want to cramp your style, but I've got a few buddies that need a place to stay. Mind if they kick it here with us for a bit? Sure, that would be great. A little while later, some other spider llamas came to the base. Zozo, these are my bro bros. Welcome to my base, everybody. After I said hi to the spider llamas, the fire elemental came to see me. I know you've already done a ton to help me, but could you do one more thing? There's a skulk scorpion that's, well, skulking around the ruins of my old house. Until he's gone, I can't rebuild it. I'll write him a strongly worded letter. Just kidding, I'll go out there and see if I can get him to leave. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled back to the Cypress Swamplands to look for that pesky skulk scorpion that was giving the fire elemental so much trouble. Is there a scorpion in the house or around the ruins of the former house? 
I didn't get an answer. What I got instead was an unwelcome surprise appearance from the Lord of Souls! Why waste your time trying to help other weaklings when you could be growing stronger, when you could be fueling my eventual victory over all? This isn't about you! Foolish Zozo! Everything is about me. Now, hone your combat skills and fight! He disappeared, and in his place, there was a huge, powerful pigless! I don't want to fight you, but I get a feeling I don't have much of a choice! From day 50 to day 53, I battled the Pigless. He was much bigger and stronger than me, but I did my best to hold my own. I did have one thing he didn't have, though, Fire Breath, and my other dinosaur abilities. With the help of those moves and my positive attitude, I managed to defeat him! You may have bested me, but only a pure heart and a diamond sword can defeat the Lord of Souls. With those final words, he vanished into dust. Oh, that was a tough one, but I did it! Oh, hey, sparkly! The Pigless dropped some mystical diamonds! I'd better take these with me. They'll probably come in handy later. From day 54 to day 57, I resumed my search for the Skulk Scorpion. No matter what the Lord of the Souls says, I know it's worth it to help out those who need it. I spotted the ruins of a house, and there, nested in the middle of it all, was the Skulk Scorpion. You can't just take this place, it's someone's home! The Scorpion just approached me threateningly and attacked! But the Scorpion Stinger was no match for my claw attack! Pretty soon, I had won! I sprinted back to my base and gave the Fire Elemental the news! Wonderful, thank you, Zozo! You really are amazing! No wonder the Lord of Souls thinks you're the hero from the prophecy. He's convinced that you're the fabled fire dragon that can give him the power to take over the world. All he needs is for you to come into your full potential. Then he'll steal your soul. I keep saying I'm not a dragon. I know you're a lava dinosaur. I've met others of your kind before. You have many abilities similar to those of dragons, but you're different too. Thank you! I was starting to worry I might be wrong. So many people kept calling me a dragon. Never let anyone tell you who you are, Zozo. You know yourself better than anyone. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to make some quick improvements to the base. I built another sheep pen and found some more sheep to herd into it. Welcome home, little sheep. Next, I remembered what the piglet said about a diamond sword. So I went into the cavern and mined until I found some diamonds. I was going to use them to craft a diamond sword, but then I remembered I also picked up those mystical diamonds before. So I used those to make my sword and the other diamonds to craft a diamond pickaxe. Afterwards, I exited my base and noticed Zack standing outside my door. Little dude, I added some awesome stuff to the base. Check it. I expanded the resting area outside to make it even better. This looks amazing. I can't wait to hang out here. From day 63 to day 66, I was trying to decide what to do next. I went down into the mines where I was surprised to find the fisherman. Zozo, I was looking for you. I heard that the Lord of Souls has his hideout in the dunes. I thought it might be worth a look. Oh, that's good to know. It's definitely somewhere dry and hot, like that book said. I'll go check it out. I traveled to the dunes and looked around for any sign of the Lord of Souls or his hideout. I didn't want to fight him yet, but I wanted to be as prepared as possible. While I was exploring, I wandered into the domain of a Crimson Phantom. Get out of here! No associates of the Lord of Souls are welcome! Wait! I'm not one! I don't work for him! I'm trying to get rid of him! Oh! That's great news! Sorry for the scare! Hi! My name's Coco! Hi, Coco! I'm Zozo! So, if you're a good guy, does that mean you could help me get rid of the creeper spider that's been lurking around and trying to bite me? Sure does! I'm great at fighting spiders! From day 67 to day 70, I helped Coco the Crimson Phantom with her spider problem. It didn't take long to find the creepy spider. It was creeping around nearby and looking for a chance to bite her. Hey, there's a bug problem here, and I'm the exterminator! I don't think spiders count as bugs, but I like your spirit! I'm not good at bug science, but I'm good at fighting! I blasted the creeper spider with my fire breath, then attacked it with my diamond sword. Pretty soon, it was done for! That spider won't be bothering you anymore! I can't thank you enough! I wish you lots of luck in your quest! From day 71 to day 74, I continued exploring the dunes. 
If I can figure out where the Lord of Souls lives, I'll know where to go when I'm ready to fight him. Speaking of fighting and adventuring, if you want to see more videos like this, search Zio, Zio, that's Zozo, me. But that call to action attracted the attention of none other than the Lord of Souls. Zozo, there you are. Uh-oh. Why aren't you cultivating that wonderful power for me? Soon it will be time for me to take it. I tried to blast him with my fire breath, but it didn't even make a mark. He was way too strong. I had to run out of there before it was too late. From day 75 to day 78, I went back to my base and headed into the pool to cool off. I can't believe I had to run away. What if I'm never strong enough to beat him? What if I get just strong enough to help him and I ruin everything? Just then, the fire elemental came to see me. That won't happen, Zozu. I know it. Hey, to get your mind off things, check out what I built. It's a watchtower for the base. I'll admit, that's pretty cool. It's hard to be sad with a watchtower like this. Thanks. After that, my main man, Zack, approached me. If you like that, then how about these apples? Sorry, that was confusing. There aren't any apples, but I do have this mace. Awesome. Let me try it out. When I did, I felt magic coursing through me. I grew bigger and stronger. The gift increased my hearts to 100, and I felt like I had a new power, too. I tested it out, and I was right. Whoa, you have a dragon fireball ability. Nope. I have a dinosaur fireball ability. From day 79 to day 84, I returned to the dunes, feeling much more confident in myself as a hero. I didn't see the Lord of Souls anywhere, but I did see a zombie shuffling around and tested my fireball out on it. It worked! I blew that zombie to smithereens! Hey, that was really cool! A big axolotl came over to congratulate me. I got this for my uncle's birthday, but I actually think you should have it. You're a way better fighter than him. He handed me diamond leggings. Whoa, thanks. Sorry to your uncle, though. Nah, it's fine. I'll just get him a gift card. His leggings will go great with the rest of my diamond gear. From day 85 to day 89, I headed back to my base to show my friends my new diamond leggings. But when I got there, it was under attack. There were Vex piglins all over the place. Hey, get out of here. Stop. I rushed towards the piglins and started to defeat them one by one using my mace. But some of them managed to run off and I gave chase. I lost sight of them after a while, but I didn't give up. I heard a loud buzzing sound though, and when I looked in its direction, I saw a giant mosquito. Ah, don't bite me. Bite you? Oh no, that's not why I'm here. I need help breaking apart this block. I've been trying for days, but I have no tools and my little bug arms are too weak. Quickly, I broke the block apart with my pickaxe. There you go. Gotta run. Bye. I'll never forget you, kind stranger. From day 90 to day 94, I tracked the Vex Piglins to a spot in the dunes. This place looks super evil. Oh, this must be the lair of the Lord of Souls. I'd better not get too close. I noticed something I hadn't seen before. The Vex Piglins had an Enderblaze with them. They were all listening to him and following his orders. We messed that place up good, huh? Yeah, the Lord of Souls will be pleased with your service. As his right-hand man, I will deliver reports of your loyalty. I rushed out of my hiding place and confronted the Enderblaze. So you're the one who messed up my base. I guess this fireball is for you then. From day 95 to day 97, I began my battle against the Enderblaze. I shot a fireball at him, but he shot a fireball back at me. I dodged it, but just barely. Ouch, that's hot. Glad it didn't hit me, but this guy is really strong. This is my hardest fight yet. I drew my mace and attacked again. This time, I had more luck. I managed to do some damage, and that gave me the confidence to keep going. I got him with my claw attack, my mace again, and that managed to finish him off. When he went down, the Ender Blaze dropped a key. This must unlock the Lord of Souls base. This is awesome. Yeah, take the key. Go inside. It's right where the Lord of Souls wants you to be. Once he has your power, he will burn down the entire world to rebuild it in his image. Thank you, Zozo. You will ensure his victory. With that, he was gone. I won't let that be true. It can't. I have to get ready because it's time to prove the Lord of Souls wrong. On day 98, I returned to my base, more determined than ever. I'm almost out of days. I've got to make every moment count. 
First, the fire elemental came to speak with me. Zozo, you saved my home. Without you, I would have nowhere to go. I know that you can conquer this force of evil. Then came Zack, the spider llama. Little dude. Well, not such a little dude anymore. But you'll always be little dude to me. I'm so proud of you, man. You're gonna do great. Dennis would be proud too. And finally, the fisherman. Zozo, I've brought you a fish. In case you get hungry or need some extra protein. Good luck, brave dinosaur. On day 99, I started my journey to the Lord of Souls base. On the way there, I passed through the Black Forest. Can't believe I used to be scared of this place. That seems like so long ago now. Finally, I reached the base, but it was crawling with Vex Piglins. Oh no, I'll have to fight all of them to get inside. No, you won't. I will. Coco! You solved my pest problem, I'll solve yours. Go, Zozo, get inside. Thank you. Leaving Coco to take on the Vex Piglins, I unlocked the door and ran inside. On day 100, I entered the lair of the Lord of Souls. I had faith in myself, but I was still so scared that I would lose. If the Lord of Souls beat me, it wouldn't only be me who suffered, it would hurt everyone. So I guess the solution to this is, don't lose. I found the Lord of Souls waiting for me in his room. Ah, here you are. As foretold, the missing piece in the puzzle of my total domination of all life. Not so fast. I shot a fireball at the Lord of Souls and it hit him. But all he did was laugh. Zozo, fire cannot harm a Lord of Souls. You cannot burn me. I can get you with this. While he was gloating, I attacked him with my mace. He staggered back from the hit. No, impossible, the prophecy. A fire dragon will give me the power I need to ascend to victory. A fire dragon might have helped you become the ultimate ruler of the world, but this lava dinosaur is going to destroy you. I swung my mace again and again as we fought fiercely against each other. Finally, I landed one last hit and the Lord of Souls collapsed on the ground. I guess it turns out that when it comes to prophecies, close enough just doesn't cut it. On day one, I spawned in as a noob dragon with a gang of angry villagers surrounding me. Hey look, another dragon. We better get that nasty beast before it gets us. What? Mister, I just got here. I don't want to get anyone. More draconic lies. You're not gonna pull one over on us. Let's get him, boys. The gang of villagers all started to chase me across the valley. I didn't understand why they were so angry at me. I was just a baby noob dragon. I only had five hearts. Luckily, I was still pretty fast for being a scaly noob, and I managed to outrun them, reaching the Aspen Forest and leaving all those villagers to eat my dust. With them gone, for now at least, I took a moment to rest amongst the trees and catch my breath. Boy, these guys sure know how to roll out the welcome wagon. I have no idea why dragons have such a terrible reputation around here. And I didn't get much pondering time. Before I could pick myself back up and run off, I was surrounded by those same villagers again. They caught up with me and emerged from between the trees, completely surrounding me. Tag him and bag him, boys. One less dragon out here makes our villages just that little bit safer. On day two, after the villagers captured me, they took me straight to dragon jail and threw me into my cell. They didn't even take time to hear me out. What about due process? Don't I have a right to a trial? Those are human rights, noob dragon. And you're not human. Darn it! At least I wasn't alone in my cell. There was also a bored looking Komodo dragon lounging around. I was happy to have someone in the same boat that I could talk to. Hey, I'm Zozo. All those villagers captured me pretty much as soon as I arrived, just because I'm a dragon. I don't understand. Nice to meet you, Zozo. I'm Carl, Komodo Carl. I've given up on trying to understand why the humans do what they do. I'm not even a real dragon. I'm just a Komodo dragon. I can't even breathe fire. Breathe fire? Wait, Carl, you're a genius. I am? I mean, uh, thank you. I'm happy to finally have my genius recognized. I turned to the door of my cell, summoned up all of my might, and blasted a fireball at the door. It wasn't all that powerful, but it was powerful enough to at least set us free. Let's go, Carl, before the villagers realize we're gone. You don't have to tell me twice, buddy. 
Carl and I ran out of there, going our separate ways. Now we both at least had a fighting chance out here. On day three, after escaping from the dragon jail, I fled to somewhere that the villagers would have a lot harder time finding me, the Black Forest. By the time I'd gone deep enough into the forest to feel safe from the villagers, I was so hungry I could barely stand it. I guess using my fireball power and then making a daring escape really works up an appetite. There wasn't a huge amount of food around, but I at least gathered up as many sweet berries as I could, eating some and storing the rest away for safekeeping. Suddenly, a huge shadow passed over. I looked up and saw something amazing. It was a huge, fully grown ender dragon soaring right above me. When she spotted me, she turned herself towards me. I looked so tiny compared to her. Hello, little one. I didn't expect to see another dragon down here, even a teeny tiny noob dragon such as yourself. Hi, Miss Ender Dragon. My name's Zozo, and I'm pretty surprised to see you too. People aren't very kind to us dragons around here. Ah, so you've encountered all the cruel, small-minded humans who are out here threatening to ruin our way of life. You're lucky you escaped with your life. Wait, you know about all of that? Please tell me more. I'd love to understand everything that's going on here. You'll understand it all in due time. Fly with me, little one, and I'll take you back to my lair. So me and the Ender Dragon used our dragon wings to take off into the sky. At least it'd be a lot harder for humans to get us up there. From day four to day five, I flew with the Ender Dragon all the way back to her draconic lair in the wooded Red Rock Mountains. As we flew over, I noticed that there was an unusual number of Endermen wandering around the mountain. I figured they must have been there with the Ender Dragon. We touched down near the top of the mountain, and that's when the Ender Dragon started telling me her story. You see, Zozo, we dragons once ruled this whole world. The natural home of all dragons is the end, but the end isn't a very vibrant place. Instead, we dragons came here and helped lift up this world to greatness. But some creatures, especially the humans, were ungrateful for everything we did for them. They decided instead to hate us and hunt us to near extinction just because we're the rightful rulers of this world. That sounds horrible. What can I do to make it all right again, Miss Ender Dragon? We must reclaim our territory piece by piece, Zozo. You can start by finding a good place to build a base. Here, take these tools. The Ender Dragon gave me a set of stone tools and I flew off again. I searched from the skies until I came across a Guianya shield biome. This seems like a good place to hang my hat. I flew down and started using my stone axe to clear trees and make space for my base. This also gave me enough wood to make a decent start on actually building it too. I took a break from my building to appreciate the scenery when I saw a gang of villagers wandering through the forest searching for me. I swear I saw a dragon fly through the sky around here. We need to find it before it does any damage. But this time, I wasn't going to settle for being captured. I blew another fireball and it exploded right next to them. They scattered immediately after that. Then I leveled up thanks to me using my dragon skills. I had 10 hearts now and I'd gotten bigger. Not as much of a noob now, am I? From day six to day eight, I was exploring more of the Guianya shield when I happened upon a sad looking raccoon wandering through. Hey raccoon, is everything okay? You look a little glum. Of course I look glum. My home just burnt down. I'm the only one who got out. Oh no, that's terrible. I'm so sorry. What happened? Was someone being careless with matches? No, no, someone else did it or something. And I know I'm not the only one. There are a lot of incidents like this. Some places getting burned. Some folks are getting poisoned. You better be careful out there. And with that, the raccoon wandered off. I knew even more now that something horrible was going on out here. But was it something I could fix in less than 100 days? The day after, the Ender Dragon returned, floating in the sky. She had some things to say to me. Zozo, I'm afraid I have grave news. The humans are working together with some of the other creatures to wipe us dragons out completely. We need to find and crush their resistance movement completely. But where would we start, Ender Dragon? I need information first and foremost. Make your way to the Jacaranda Forest. I believe there may be some people of interest there. Find out all that you can. And while you're there, if you can find an old chest of mine, I left an echo locator inside. It'll help you find caves. Without any delay, I set off to the Jacaranda Forest. 
From day 9 to day 10, I flew away from my base and made my way towards the Jacaranda Forest, hoping to find some information and, if I was lucky, the Ender Dragon's old chest. I landed in the forest and started searching. Thankfully, it didn't actually take me long to find the chest that the Ender Dragon told me about. Plus, thankfully, there was an angry Crimson Phantom guarding it. The owner of this chest told me I could have what was inside it, sir. Oh yeah? Well, I don't care. It's my chest now, and if you want it back, you're gonna have to fight me for it. The fight began, and because I was still technically a real noob dragon, the Crimson Phantom was stronger than me. His attacks were powerful, and he seemed to be good at tanking mine. I pulled out of the fight and tried to collect myself. I was worried the Crimson Phantom was going to attack me, until a Phantom Fox ran in and distracted him for me. Hey Crimson, don't you know why you shouldn't fight with dragons? You'll get burned. This was just the distraction I needed to fire a fireball at the Crimson Phantom, destroying him for good. Thanks for the assist, Phantom Fox. No problem, noob dragon. With the Crimson Phantom gone, I easily searched the chest and grabbed the echolocator. The Phantom Fox was still there, waiting for me. Say, want to come visit my friend, the Elder Guardian? I think he'd like you. Sure, he might be able to help me with some information I need. We traveled deeper into the forest until we came upon the Elder Guardian. All three of us sat down to chat and I asked the Elder Guardian if he knew anything about the human resistance groups. Resistance groups? Where have you heard of such a thing? I don't know of any resistance groups, just people trying to do their best to survive hard times. Interesting. I'll report back with that. From day 11 to day 12, I flew from the Jacaranda Forest back to the wooded Red Rock Mountains where the Ender Dragon was waiting for me. Well, do you have anything to tell me about the resistance groups? Our continued survival depends on it, Zozo. I spoke to some people, and the funny thing is, nobody seems to know about any resistance groups, just people trying to survive. Fools! All of them fools! Do I have to do everything myself? Gather up some iron from a cave to create some iron armor, then find a remote village to the south of here. You'll see evidence of the human resistance with your own eyes, since you seem to have so little trust in me. I had no idea why the Ender Dragon seemed so mean and angry with me all of a sudden, but I figured I still better do what she said. I flew down from the mountain and used the echo locator to find the nearest cave. I headed inside and started mining until I found some iron ore. This would be perfect for armor and tools. But when I left the cave, some angry dread thralls were waiting for me. Can't you guys give me a break? I've been having kind of a rough week. They didn't listen. Instead, they attacked. Luckily for me, it was easy to make short work of them with my fire breath attack. Now I need to go find that remote village. From day 13 to day 15, after searching for a couple of days, I found the remote village that the Ender Dragon told me about. But it seemed so peaceful. It was a small, isolated community guarded by a single iron golem. They didn't even seem bothered by me being there, like the villagers that had first imprisoned me. A lot of what the Ender Dragon told me doesn't seem to add up. Something's wrong. I need to get out of here and find out the truth. From day 16 to day 19, I flew back to the wooded Red Rock Mountains to get some straight answers out of the Ender Dragon, only to find that she wasn't there. This whole situation just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I'm starting to get a little worried, honestly. I flew back to my base, turning this whole thing over in my mind, when I noticed someone was already at my base, waiting for me. It was one of the villagers from that little remote village that the Ender Dragon made me stake out. Oh gosh, I hope you're a nice dragon, because that evil Ender Dragon is attacking my village, and I need some help. Wait, the Ender Dragon? Oh no, don't worry, I'll go over there right away. I flew back to the remote village and saw, to my horror, that the villager was right. The Ender Dragon was flying above, destroying everything. I flew in and tried to reason with her. Ender Dragon, why are you doing this? These people aren't part of the resistance. You gullible fool! You barely deserve to call yourself a dragon! There is no resistance! There are only we dragons and all inferior species! You can either be with me or against me! I'm not going to let you hurt innocent people, Ender Dragon! Then you're against me! The Ender Dragon blew one of her poisonous purple fireballs at me, and everything went black! From day 20 to day 22, I woke up from being knocked out and found that the Ender Dragon was gone! But she'd also destroyed the entire village and left no survivors! Except for one iron golem who was left without anything to defend. 
I feel terrible. It was my duty to defend them, and now they're all gone because of me. It isn't your fault, Iron Golem. It was the Ender Dragon's fault. Come back to my base with me. We'll work together to defeat the Ender Dragon and avenge everyone she hurt. Yes, that sounds like the only way that I can bring my heart some peace. The Iron Golem and I went back to my base. I let him stay in my house and made sure he was happy here. Thank you, Zozo. This looks like a wonderful place to stay. And while I was there, I built a smelting furnace, where I turned my iron ore into iron ingots, built a few new pieces of armor, and an iron pickaxe. I'm going to use all my might to become an experienced dragon and take down the ender dragon for all she's done! From day 23 to day 26, I decided to take my new iron gear out for a spin. If I was going to become a mighty enough dragon to defeat the ender dragon, I needed to get to work and explore some new areas. I ventured out to the desert and started looking around. Then I spotted a Vex Piglin attacking a Komodo dragon. Wait a second, I know that Komodo dragon. Komodo Carl, I'll save you. Zozo, thank goodness, I thought I was a goner. I rushed over and started attacking the Vex Piglin, but it was really strong. Yikes, this is gonna be a harder fight than I thought. The Vex Piglin knocked me down. Oh no, Zozo, look out. Carl, I can't defeat this guy by myself. I need you to help me. How can I help? I'm just a Komodo dragon. You're the real deal. I couldn't even free myself without your help. Just trust me. If we work together, we'll be much stronger than we are by ourselves. I'll give it my best shot. Komodo Carl jumped in and attacked the Vex Piglin while I was down, attacking him and saving my life. Thanks for your help. See, I knew you were stronger than you thought you were. Thank you for showing me that and helping me save myself. Hey, let me give you something to say thanks. He gave me a Komodo Dragon spit bottle. Oh, uh, thanks, I guess. I know it seems gross, but you can use this to make a potion resistance potion. It should help protect you. Oh, cool, thanks. From day 27 to day 31, I took a stroll through the beautiful rose fields to catch my breath after that fight with the Vex Piglin. Seeing all those flowers definitely put me in a good mood. While I was stopping to smell the roses, I saw a herd of sheep. They were wandering around and looked pretty lost, so I told them to follow me back to my base. Once we got there, I built a pen for the sheep to live in. Here you go, you guys can stay here as long as you like. Oh, Zozo, you're back! I'm so glad. I wanted to show you what I did while you were gone. The Iron Golem showed me some bookshelves he added to the base. Awesome, thanks! Meanwhile, in the wooded Red Rock Mountains, the Ender Dragon was up to no good, with a frightening Ender Blaze standing by her side. I'm so glad you see things my way, Ender Blaze. With your help, no one will dare oppose me ever again. My pleasure. We Ender Beings should be in charge of everything, and if you're the one who's gonna make that happen, I'll do anything I can to help. From day 32 to day 35, I left my base to go explore the enchanted forest. I was just taking a casual stroll and looking around, when suddenly, a group of warped Moscos spotted me. Oh no, a dragon! Quick, let's get him before he burns down our forest! They rushed toward me and started attacking me. Hey, wait! I'm not here to burn anything down. I live in this forest too! That's what the dragon in our last forest said, but he was a liar! I bet you are too! Wait a second, the Ender Dragon, she lied to me too! It's my mission to defeat her so she can't hurt anyone else! Really? You promise? I promise! My name is Zozo, and I'm a nice dragon! If that's really true, then you should come with us! I followed them to a warped toad who was sitting under a tree. Well, I certainly didn't expect you boys to bring me a dragon. I'm here to help, I swear. My name is Zozo. I don't like the Ender Dragon any more than you do. Well, as the old saying goes, fight fire with fire. Having a dragon on our side might be the advantage we need to end the Ender Dragon's reign of terror. The Ender Dragon isn't used to battling his own kind, you see. She's tricked most of them into working with her. I'll tell you anything else that I learned, and help you however I can, Zozo. 
From day 36 to day 39, I decided to work on upgrading my armor. I went down into the mine and started digging for iron. I found enough to craft the rest of the armor I needed, and I even found a couple of diamonds too. I gathered everything and took it back to my base. I used the iron I mined to complete the rest of my set, and when I was finished, I saw a raccoon at the entrance to the base. Hey, are you Zozo? That's me. Oh, good. I heard you're trying to learn more about being a dragon, so you can get strong enough to stop the Ender Dragon, right? I am. Are you here to give me dragon lessons or something? Nah, I'm just a raccoon. I could teach you how to find food in the trash, but I think you'd rather talk to my friend. She's a lightning dragon, and she's not too fond of the Ender Dragon either. If you're not busy, you can come with me to meet her. I'm never too busy to learn. Let's go. From day 40 to day 43, I followed the raccoon to the Aracaria savanna. She's really excited to meet you. Oh jeez, but I'm just a noob dragon. I'm still learning. Yeah, but you were brave enough to stand up to the ender dragon. That's a big deal. Here she is. I saw a huge, tough lightning dragon sunning herself in the middle of the savanna. It sure was a sight to see. You must be Zozo. I'm so happy to meet you. I know you're looking to get stronger and learn more about being a dragon. I've been a dragon for a pretty long time, so I hope I can help. That would be awesome! Can you help me get better at breathing fire? Before she could answer, an ender blaze jumped out from behind a tree and landed right in front of us. Well, 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 look what I found. A couple of traders working together. Who the heck are you? I'm the guy that's gonna teach you a lesson about opposing the ender dragon. The Ender Blaze fired a missile at me, and I just barely managed to dodge it. Help! The Lightning Dragon gave me some of her power to fight the Ender Blaze. I felt myself get bigger and stronger too, but just when we thought we defeated him, he kept attacking. You've done a great job here today, Zozo, but you need to get out of here. I'll keep this guy busy. Go! From day 44 to day 49, I flew back to my base. I hope the Lightning Dragon is okay. I didn't have too much time to think about it though, because the warped toad came to see me. Zozo, I have some news. My research has pointed me to a weapon that I believe will help you defeat the Ender Dragon. It is a netherite axe, a powerful axe made by combining a diamond axe with netherite ingots. Oh, I have some diamonds already. Excellent. And you have the amount of diamonds required to craft a diamond axe? Well, no, I need to go get more diamonds. Then hop to it, young dragon. Time is of the essence. I get it. Hop like a toad. Very funny. This is no laughing matter, Zozo. Much is at stake. Good luck. On the encouragement of the warped toad, I headed down into the mine and started digging for diamonds. Phew, all this mining is hard work, but it'll be worth it when I finally defeat the Ender Dragon. It took a while, but I found some diamonds, enough to make a diamond axe. Now I just need to figure out where I can find a netherite ingot. From day 50 to day 53, I started my quest to find some netherite ingots and build the netherite axe. I ventured out to the crag gardens to see what I could learn. When I got there, a cleric came up to me. Greetings, little dragon. Are you a friend of the warped toad? I am. What can you tell me about a netherite axe? Well, the Ender Dragon is vulnerable to netherite weapons, according to stories I have heard. She isn't able to melt them with her fiery breath the way she would ordinary metal weapons. The combination of diamond and netherite makes it indestructible to her. That's great news! Do you know where I can find some netherite? Now that I'm afraid I don't know. I wish you luck though. Okay, well thanks for the info. I started to head back to my base. As I was walking, a fireball hit the ground just a few feet away from me. Hey, what gives? I could see a fire dragon just up ahead. I'm so sorry. I wasn't aiming for you. I was aiming for those zombies. Sure enough, he was fighting a horde of zombies. Want some help with that? Yeah, I've got this. He shot another fireball out of his mouth and blew up the rest of the zombies without any trouble at all. Whoa, that was awesome! Say, do you want to team up with me and help me fight the Ender Dragon? No thanks, I'm good. Sorry kid, but I fly solo. Good luck with uh, whatever you're doing though. Sounds like you're gonna need it. From day 54 to day 57, I explored the Crag Garden some more. If I were some netherite, where would I be? Just as I was searching, the Ender Blaze popped up behind me again. I don't know about netherite, but it looks like there's plenty of loserite here. Because you're a loser, you tiny noob dragon. 
Ah, oh, the Ender Blaze is back! I drew my weapon and got ready for a fight, but he was still way bigger and stronger than me! Oh no, I can't beat him yet! And you never will. All hail the Ender Dragon! May her fire cleanse the land of all weakness! I didn't have any choice but to run away as fast as I could! Next time I see that guy, I'll be ready! Meanwhile, back in the wooded Red Rock Mountains, the Ender Dragon was floating back and forth! It's all coming together marvelously! Soon there will be only dragons and those who serve us! Any of my kind that refuse to join me will be dealt with swiftly! All else will be burned to ash or reduced to nothing but dust! <laughs> From day 58 to day 62, I went back to my base to check things out and figure out my next step. When I got there, I noticed something was different. There were walls. Wow, this looks great. The iron golem stepped forward. Glad you think so. My mother always taught me that a good house guest helps out however they can. And I had some spare time, so I built some bigger walls. Thank you. I still think the base needs something else, though. Maybe something decorative? Yeah, like a statue. I know, I'll build a statue of an adult dragon to remind myself what I'm working toward. When I look like the statue, I'll know I'm done growing up. I gathered some materials and started constructing my adult dragon statue. Then I added some banners to the base to spruce up the place even more. Next, I used my diamonds to craft myself a diamond axe. What a great day! I'm one step closer to having what I need to defeat the Ender Dragon! I just have to stay brave and keep going! From day 63 to day 66, the cleric came to visit me at my base! Zozo! The time has come for you to gather the remaining materials for the Netherite Axe! In order to find Netherite, you must enter the Nether! Okay, um, how do I do that? Through a portal, dear dragon! There is one I can lead you to, and once it is operational, you will be able to travel through it to the nether. Oh, okay, neat. Follow me, Zozo. I followed the cleric out to the snowy blue taiga. This is where the portal is. Unfortunately, it appears to be broken. You will not be able to pass through it until it has been repaired. Oh, bummer. How do we fix it? That I cannot tell you. I will return to my research and see what I can learn. In the meantime, explore this area and see if you can unlock the secrets of the portal for yourself. I never could have dreamed becoming an adult dragon would be so much work, but I was ready for the challenge. If I needed a working portal to help me complete my quest, I would find a way to make it work. From day 67 to day 70, I wandered around the snowy blue taiga looking for clues that might help me fix the broken portal. Zozo, is that you, buddy? Oh, hey, Komodo Carl! What brings you all the way out here? I came out here to visit some friends, but I ran into an ice dragon causing all kinds of trouble, freezing my vacation house. Oh, no! Let's go see if we can stop it! I followed Komodo Carl to his vacation home, and sure enough, there was a great big ice dragon stomping all over the place! Hey, what are you doing? Cut that out! You? You work for that infernal ender dragon! You can't tell me what to do! I don't work for her anymore! A likely story! Ice to meet you, little dragon! Prepare to be frozen in your tracks! Then the ice dragon rushed at me and attacked! I had gotten a lot stronger and better at fighting though, and I was able to defeat him and knock him down! Please, listen to me! I don't work for the Ender Dragon anymore! In fact, I'm trying to stop her, but I need help to do it! If you join me, maybe we can stop her, once and for all! That would be more productive than taking out my rage on this random vacation home! You know what? I will join you! From day 71 to day 74, I returned to my base and found the Ender Blaze had beaten me to it! He was launching fireballs at everything in sight and had already knocked down one of the walls completely! Uh -oh. No! Stop that! If you want me to stop so badly, you'll have to fight me! What if I'm not strong enough? I guess I'll have to try anyway! I attacked the Ender Blaze, but he knocked me down! He's still too strong! What do I do? Perish! <laughs> he attacked me, but I dodged it! Get away from our base, you fiend! The Iron Golem attacked the Ender Blaze, but the Ender Blaze grabbed him! I'll take this! Smell you later, foolish baby dragon! The two of them teleported away in the blink of an eye! He'd kidnapped my friend! No! That was too far! I needed to get strong enough to beat the Ender Blaze so I could save the Iron Golem who had helped me so much! 
I won't let you down, Iron Golem, no matter what. I can promise you that much. First, I had to repair the damage to my base. I rebuilt the busted wall and added a guard tower and a fence for extra protection in case Ender Dragon sent any more minions to attack me. Looking at my hard work, I couldn't help but feel regret for not putting in all these security features earlier. Meanwhile, back in the Red Rock Mountains. Excellent work, Ender Blaze. Without his little friend to help him, Zozo stands no chance. Not that he had one to begin with. There is none mightier than the Ender Dragon in all the land. And soon, everyone will bow down to me. From day 75 to day 78, the Warped Toad came to see me at my base. Zozo, I heard about what happened. I'm so sorry, little one. But all hope is not lost. I know, I just have to work harder. And you just need the right equipment. I'm sure you know by now that diamond weapons are more effective against the Ender Dragon, but they're also most effective against his Ender Blaze as well. I brought you this, and it should help you in your quest. He handed me a diamond sword. Thank you. Do you know where the Ender Blaze might have taken my friend? Yes, that was my second gift. You didn't give me a chance to show you. Anyway, here it is. Take this map, and it will lead you there. You've come a long way already, Zozo. I know you can do it. Thank you. Armed with the map and my new diamond sword, I headed off to confront the Enderblaze for what I hoped would be the last time. From day 79 to day 84, I followed the map to the Enderblaze's base. Give me back my friend, you monster. He came out of the base to face me. I could see the iron golem trapped behind him. Oh, I'm a monster, am I? And you aren't? For betraying the Ender Dragon, who took you under her wing and taught you what it means to be a dragon? Being a dragon isn't about hurting innocent people and being a bully. She's a liar! And you're a loser. Please, feel free to fight me again if you're so eager to taste defeat once more. I drew my sword and attacked as fast as I could. He blocked my attack with ease, and I started to get worried. Oh no, is this new sword enough to defeat him? Of course it's not! He hit me hard, knocking me down. It was looking like things might be over for me, when suddenly the ice dragon slammed into the Ender Blaze. Not so fast. I thought you only worked alone. I usually do, but I'm not going to let the Ender Dragon ruin everything for our kind. Let's teach this guy a lesson. Here, take this. He tossed me a dragon enhancement potion, which I drank quickly. Ugh, tastes gross. Even though it didn't taste good, the potion made me transform into a full-grown adult dragon. And I gained hearts. Not such a little dragon anymore. Now, let's handle this Ender Blaze. With the Ice Dragon's help and my brand new strength and size, we were finally able to defeat him and free the Iron Golem. From day 85 to day 89, I headed out to the Badlands to collect some terracotta I could use to finish off my statue. It was perfect timing, finishing the statue of an adult dragon when I was finally one myself. I returned to my base and put the finishing touches on the statue. That looks great! Then the cleric came back to see me. Zozo, I have great news! I know how you can fix the nether portal. Take these obsidian blocks and use them to repair it. Then you can go through and collect the netherite you require. Awesome! Thank you so much! I took the obsidian blocks and ventured back out to the snowy blue taiga where the broken portal was waiting for me. I used the blocks to fix the portal and then I was ready to enter the nether. Wow, this place is kind of spooky. I looked around for a while and I saw some ancient debris. Oh, that's it. If I get that ancient debris, I can get some netherite. But as I ran toward the ancient debris, an ender gas jumped out and attacked me. I don't have time for this. Get out of my way. With my new strength and size, it was easy to blow that ender gas away. Then I grabbed the ancient debris and headed back through the portal. Now I have everything I need. From day 90 to day 94, I emerged from the portal and was back in the snowy blue taiga. But my good mood didn't last long because the Ender Dragon was waiting for me. Hello again, Zozo. You've grown, I see. Not a noob dragon any longer. You're a mighty beast now. Join me, come and work for me again. And together, we will conquer this puny land. No, I'll never join you. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, well, you're just mean. If that is your choice, then so be it. Hey, what's that behind you? When I turned to look, she snatched the ancient debris out of my hands. Hey, give that back. 
No, I don't think I will. I'll give you something to keep you busy, though. As she got ready to fly away, she dropped a cage on me. I was trapped. From day 95 to day 97, I used my fiery breath to destroy the cage so I could escape. Yay, I'm out. But now what should I do? I know, I'll go see the warped toad and ask him what to do. I traveled to the enchanted forest and tracked down the warped toad. When I arrived, he was lying on the ground, dying. Who did this to you? The Ender Dragon. She attacked me. I don't have much time. Listen to me. She's taken what she stole from you back to her base. You'll have to go there and retrieve it. Thank you for your heroism, Zozo. Goodbye. No! I'll make her pay for this! I swear! On day 98, I returned to my base and was greeted by a horrible sight! My base was completely destroyed while I was gone! She must have come here too! Curse her! This is terrible! I looked around for my friends that were living there, but they were gone! Oh no, what do I do? My base, my leader, my friends! She took everything from me! Not everything! I turned around and the ice dragon was there! I'm sorry you're sad, Zozo, but I can help. If the two of us team up, I think we can take down the Ender Dragon together. What should we do? We'll gather up our weapons and supplies, and we'll head to a base together. Then, we'll fight as hard as we can. Okay, let's do it. On day 99, the Ice Dragon and I journeyed into the wooded Red Rock Mountains, where the Ender Dragon's base was. Ready? Not really, but I don't have much of a choice. Let's give it our best shot. Hello, traitors. Come to grovel at my claws. The Ender Dragon rushed us both. No, we're here to take you down. Ha, huh, funny joke, but I'm finished laughing. Time to taste defeat. Time for you to freeze. The Ice Dragon attacked the Ender Dragon, but she dodged the attack and came back with an even harder hit. She knocked the Ice Dragon down and he didn't get back up. No! I attacked next, but the Ender Dragon was still way too strong. I did get one good hit in though, and she dropped the ancient debris. With no other choice, I grabbed it and ran all the way back to my base. There, I was finally able to craft the netherite axe. When I did, I felt the strength coursing through my body. And when I looked up, the ice dragon and lightning dragon were back. You're alive. Sure am, and I'm ready for round two. On day 100, the dragons and I returned to the Ender Dragon's base. We can't let this lady keep giving dragons a bad name. Let's show her what it really means to be a dragon. All together, we attacked the base. The Lightning Dragon and the Ice Dragon worked together to fight off her minions while I went inside to find the Ender Dragon. Your days of stepping on the little guy are done. Ready to lose again so soon? If you're so eager, then let's fight. Well, I've got this now. I pulled out the netherite axe, and she actually looked a little bit scared. How did you get that? With a lot of help, because unlike you, I believe in kindness and friendship and kicking your butt. I ran at her with the axe and started fighting. This time, I knew I was strong enough. Before long, I delivered the final blow, and the ender dragon fell to the ground. Finally, there can be peace between dragons and the rest of the world. On day one, I spawned into the deep dark forest as a skeleton dragon, one of the coolest and spookiest kinds of dragons there is. Well, I guess I'm more of a baby skeleton dragon. I must have just come out of the skeleton altar. That's gotta be why I only have three hearts. And what's this in my inventory? A void worm eye? What would I use that for? That's when I saw a skeleton horse riding out of the trees towards me. For some reason, she looked worried. What are you doing here, baby skeleton dragon? I just got here. My name's Zozo. What's going on? It's dangerous to be in this forest at night. We need to get out of here. Before I could ask any more questions, I saw shadows in the dark between the trees. And suddenly, I felt uneasy. Zozo, we have to leave. Now! Mr. Dark is here! Mr. Dark? Who's Mr. A tall, shadowy figure appeared in the trees behind us. At first, all I could see was his glowing purple eyes. No need to run away. Why don't you come with me, little ones? I'll take you to Playland. We'll have toys and games and candy. I just know you're going to love it. I knew in my dragon bones I couldn't trust this man. He creeped me out just standing near him. So me and the skeleton horse ran away as fast as we could. You can run, little ones. 
but I'll take you all to Playland soon. We took refuge in a nearby cave to wait out the rest of the night, worried Mr. Dark might find us at any moment. What's your name, Skeleton Horse? Sally. I'm Sally the Skeleton Horse. Thanks for the save, Sally. On day two, Sally the Skeleton Horse and I emerge from the cave with the sun shining high up above. We're safer during the daytime. I've only ever seen Mr. Dark under the moonlight. We decided, with a little less pressure on us, to start exploring the rest of the forest. It definitely wasn't so scary with the sun shining in through the trees. Maybe we should collect some apples. That's a good idea, Zozo. A skeleton horse is still a horse, and I love apples. We happily collected apples, until a huge shape came lumbering out of the dark. It was a skeleton dragon, a huge adult skeleton dragon with black bones. Oh, wow. Hey, Mr. Skeleton Dragon, I'm Zozo, and I'm one of your kind. The adult skeleton dragon seemed relieved to see me. Oh, thank goodness. I've been looking for you everywhere. I'm in terrible trouble, and I need the help of another skeleton dragon. I just didn't expect you to be so small. I may be small, but I've got a big heart. How can I help you? A friend of mine, the blue skeleton dragon, was taken by something. Some tall, shadowy entity. And I need help in getting him back. That sounds just like Mr. Dark. He terrorized us too. But don't worry, we'll help you get your friend back from Mr. Dark, no matter what. Thank you, Zozo, and friend. For now, I must go. Stay safe. The adult skeleton dragon flew away, leaving me and Sally alone. It was time to work on our first base, so we started breaking down trees and collecting sticks and wood. I was able to build a crafting bench and made my first set of wooden tools and weapons. These would be perfect for my first base. We found a clearing in the forest and started building ourselves a humble wooden shack with one bed and a stable outside. But all the while, Sally looked a little concerned. What's wrong, Sally? That skeleton dragon's friend. We better work hard at getting him back. Mr. Dark only keeps people at Playland for a hundred days. After that, well, you don't want to know. And she was right. I really didn't. On day three, I was wandering through the forest, looking for apples to eat and more supplies that I could use to upgrade my base. Nothing like fresh air and a walk to make a morning happy and healthy. But during my walk, I saw a hulking figure behind the trees, a mutant skeleton. He looked big and a little scary, so when he turned around and looked at me, I ran for the hills. Not today, mutant skeleton. I returned to my base, where I felt a lot safer and started mining into a nearby hill to gather some stone. Then, I made made my first set of stone tools, a stone sword, and even started building a sturdy stone wall around my base. But as I was building my wall, I was suddenly approached by an angry looking gang of rogue tomatoes. They somehow looked both silly and like they meant business. Don't you laugh at us, bub. Or I'm gonna give you a knuckle sandwich with extra ketchup, you hear? Those were fighting words, so I decided it was time to give my brand new stone sword some action. If it's a tussle you want, it's a tussle you'll get, tomatoes. I fought them all, making short work of them with my stone sword. And after their defeat, one of them dropped a milk bucket. Guess I'll just keep this, in case it comes in handy. That's when I looked up and noticed it was getting dark. I'd need to finish the wall another day. I definitely didn't want to get stuck outside while Mr. Dark was on the prowl. Instead, I went back to my bedroom and got a good night's sleep. On days four and five, I woke up to the sound of Sally the Skeleton Horse entering my room. Hey, Sally, what's up? Zozo, I noticed you brought back a milk bucket last night. You should drink it. Milk contains calcium, and calcium is good for your bones. It's the perfect way for a skeleton dragon to get stronger. That sounded like a great idea. So I chugged the milk and immediately found myself getting stronger. I grew to a big, tougher form with six hearts rather than three. This is more like it. I'm gonna go take a walk in my new form. I'll finish up the wall while you're out. So that's what I did. But this time, I didn't wanna just walk through the forest. I went all the way to the desert so I could feel the heat on my bones. Ah, <sighs> sun and skeletons go together like peanut butter and jelly. I turned and saw a wither skeleton further out into the desert. He seemed to be fishing in a pond. I couldn't believe how many friendly skeletons I was running into these days. I made my way over the small hill to him. Enjoying the sun, fellow skeleton? Want to come back to my base and hang out with me and my horse friend, Mr. Wither Skeleton? We're putting together a group to help save an innocent skeleton dragon from an evil man. Sounds good to me, brother. Let's boogie. The Wither Skeleton and I traveled back to the base together. And we came back just in time because a big, angry ravager was trying to break down my defensive wall. Uh-oh. 
Wanna help me run off this nasty customer, Weather Skeleton? Heck yeah, let's do it. With the both of us ready to fight, the Ravager was outmanned. We didn't manage to defeat it, but it did run away. By then, it was already almost nightfall. We needed to get some sleep, in case Mr. Dark came out looking for us. I installed a second bed in my cabin, as well as some more furniture, and invited the Wither Skeleton to come stay with us. Sounds good to me, brother. Sleepover time. On day six through eight, me and the Wither Skeleton went out into the forest and collected some more yummy apples. But that wasn't all we were looking for. We found the same cave that Sally and I had hidden in the first night I arrived here. It's mining time. And then I mined all over that cave. It didn't take me long to find enough iron and coal to smell myself some new weapons and tools. Iron weapons, iron tools, I'm really moving up in the world. After leaving the cave with our loot and returning to the forest, we were suddenly ambushed by the same Ravager, looking for revenge. Be ready to fight, Wither Skeleton. This won't be easy. I was born ready, Zozo. But sadly, he wasn't actually born ready. That Ravager was way stronger than we thought. We fought the Ravager until it was defeated, but the Wither Skeleton was destroyed in the process. Wither Skeleton, no, I'll never forget you. He dropped his hat, which I decided to take with me. He had also dropped a flint and steel, a useful item for lighting fires. On the way back to my base, I encountered a soul vulture hanging out amongst the trees. Hey, Mr. Soul Vulture, wanna come back to my base? I figure us bone brothers should stick together. Hmm, is it cozy? The coziest in all the forest. Well, I can hardly say no to that, can I? The soul vulture came back to my base with me where I built him his own room. I also used some of my excess iron to create an iron golem to guard the base. Now I can sleep a little easier. On days 9 to 10, I was woken up in the middle of the night by something scratching my window. I looked up and saw Mr. Dark, his bright purple eyes staring in through my window. He was so creepy, I could barely stand it. Mr. Dark, how did you get past my guard wall and my iron golem? Mr. Dark gave a creepy little giggle. I can go anywhere I want at any time I want, Zozo. No walls are too high, no trenches are too deep, and no golem is too strong. If I wanted to, I could open your door and walk into your bedroom right now. And why don't you? Because where'd be the fun in that? Silly little dragon boy, you'll choose to come to Playland with me. I just know you will, and you'll have a wonderful time. I'll be keeping my eye on you, Zozo. I'll come back when you least expect it, and then you'll be all mine. Then he disappeared, and I couldn't get back to sleep for the rest of the night. On days 11 through 12, still feeling shaken up from my encounter with Mr. Dark the night before, I decided to build some base improvements. I made the wall taller and started digging a trench around the outside of the wall so the only way to get in or out would be the front gate, guarded by my iron golem. This should keep that nasty midnight creep away. After my work was done, Sally the Skeleton Horse approached me with a suggestion. Zozo, you should train yourself and get stronger by visiting new biomes. How about a trip to the beach? Yeah, I could use a trip to the beach after a week like this. I made my way to the beach with Sally for a mixture of relaxation and hardcore strength training. And it didn't take long for us to need it because a bunch of angry iron chickens started attacking us. We're the iron chicken muggers. And believe us, we can be pretty foul. So you better hand over all your buck buck bucks. Thankfully, with Sally and I working together, we were able to defeat the Iron Chicken Muggers and keep all of our hard-earned money. This kind of thing is exactly why I hate chickens. We kept exploring until we found another skeleton friend, a skeleton deer. So of course, I invited her back to my base. Gee, thanks. I'd love a new place to stay. I've been getting tired of all this sand. The skeleton deer followed us back to the base, where I built her a new section of the stable to sleep in. This is so comfy. Thanks, Zozo. Don't mention it, skeleton deer. And by the way, I saw you fighting the iron chickens. You were good. But if you want to get better, I recommend seeking out the necromancer. He can mentor you to greatness. The necromancer? That sounds like a plan. On days 13 to 15, I left my base and began searching the forest for the necromancer. I'm sick of being afraid and hiding away when the bad guys come. I want to be strong enough to be brave and fight back. But it turned out I was talking to myself a little too loudly because an angry stone monster came running at me through the woods. Uh oh, sorry about the noise. I'm guessing we can't just talk this out. 
He did not want to talk it out. Instead, he chased me, and I ran as fast as I could on my skeleton dragon legs. But he was faster. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. But just as he was about to catch me, something burst out of the tree line as quick as a flash. It was the mutant skeleton I'd run away from earlier. He pulled out his bow and easily defeated the stone monster, really saving my bones. Thank you, mutant skeleton. I'm so sorry for running away earlier. I guess I learned a valuable lesson about judging on appearances. No problem, Zozo. I know I can look a little scary sometimes, but really, I'm out here trying to help. Want to come and stay at my base for a while? I'm putting together a team. I'd love to, but there's too much work to do protecting people out here. Perhaps I'll drop in for a visit sometime, though. Eh? Me and the mutant skeleton went our separate ways, and I continued searching for the fabled necromancer until I saw a gremlin hunt around, looking clearly distressed. What's wrong, little gremlin? I'm in trouble, man. These, like, nasty jungle spiders have been chasing me all day, and I'm worried they're gonna get me. Hmm, stand back, little gremlin. This sounds like a job for Zozo. With my trusty sword, I found that nasty swarm of jungle spiders and took them out before returning to the gremlin. Whoa, Zozo, you're like a real hero. That was awesome. No problem, little gremlin. Say, you know where I might be able to find a necromancer? Oh, the necromancer. You'll find him in the west of here. Keep heading in that direction, and you're sure to meet him. Thank you, Gremlin. That's exactly what I needed to hear. For days 16 to 19, I began my journey west in search of the necromancer, until I heard a terrible crashing noise coming from the distance behind me. It sounded like it was coming from my base. I immediately turned tail and ran all the way back, only to see that my defensive wall had been destroyed, and a dangerous zombie taiga was attacking my base. What are you doing, you meanie? It's nothing personal, kid. Mr. Doc told me to do this. If I don't hurt you, he'll hurt me. That's just the way it is. I turned and saw something awful. He'd already destroyed the skeleton deer and the soul vulture. Sally, the skeleton horse, was my only companion left. That's it. You're going down. I pulled out my sword and attacked the zombie taiga, but it seems like he deflected the hits without any effort. He was almost unstoppable. That was just embarrassing. If you couldn't defeat me, you'll have no hope against Mr. Dark. I'm out of here. And with that, the zombie taiga fled, leaving me in the ruins of my base with two of my friends, gone. I feel useless, like I can't protect anyone. That's when a gang of mossy skeletons turned up. They looked frightened and said they'd heard I'd been offering other skeletons a place to stay. Of course you can stay here, new buddies. But I'm gonna need to make a few renovations first. I built a new barracks on the side of my base for the mossy skeletons to live in. They seemed quite happy with their new place. And I took the time to rebuild some of the defenses that the zombie taiga destroyed. But I can't just defend my base. I need to be able to defend myself too. I mined for more iron and coal until I had everything I needed to smelt myself a new set of iron armor. I may have lost a battle, but I wouldn't lose the war. On days 20 to 22, I left my base to search for some statue building materials. After all, a cool statue is great for inspiring everyone to do their best. But on my way out to mine some stone, I was ambushed by a green troll with an axe to grind. Well, more specifically, he had a giant fist. I've got no interest in feeding any trolls today. With my sword at the ready, we engaged in a tense duel. Thankfully, with my new iron armor, I was able to withstand his attacks and defeat him. Iron and bone beats flesh. Afterwards, I traveled further through the forest until I stumbled upon a desert with the remains of a giant skeleton. Whoa, this is perfect for building a cool statue. And I know exactly what I'll make with them. I started mining the ribs one by one, making sure I didn't fall into the pools of lava. By the end of it, I had all the bone blocks I'd ever need. On the way back, I encountered a herd of wild sheep grazing and decided I'd tame them and lead them back to the base because you never know when some wool will come in handy. When we reached the base, I made a new, fenced-off section where the sheep could graze and be left to their own devices. And with that out of the way, it was time to start statue building. Laying down the base is one of the most important parts, so the statue doesn't just tumble over. Can you guess what the statue is going to be yet? Let me know 
out down in the comments. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the forest to search for the necromancer. I needed his teachings to help me get stronger and defeat Mr. Dark. While wandering through the woods, I got attacked by a nasty gang of rotten rats. They tried to bite me and give me some nasty diseases. When it comes to rats versus skeleton dragons, rats don't win. I defeated the last of them with my iron sword and continued searching. On the way, I ran into a wither skeleton jockey riding a spider. He reminded me of the wither skeleton who used to be my friend. Hey, Mr. Wither Skeleton Jockey, wanna come back and stay at my base? Nice offer, but no thanks. There are some evil things lurking in these woods, and I've learned not to trust anyone. Maybe some other time. All right, suit yourself. Stay safe out there. It felt like the day had been a total waste as I journeyed further into the forest. But just as I was ready to give up, I saw the necromancer himself sitting on a rock and meditating. No way, the necromancer, is it really you? Those who seek me will find me, little skeleton dragon. And I assume you've been seeking me. I have. I want you to mentor me and help me become more powerful. Well, young dragon, with great power comes great. Well, you have to have a good reason to have great power. So, what is your reason? I don't need it for myself. I need it to defeat Mr. Dark and save everyone he's captured. That, little dragon, is a good reason. Your training begins now. For days 27 to 31, the necromancer gave me my first challenge. To defeat an entity as evil and spooky as Mr. Dark, you need to learn to conquer your fear. It's okay to be afraid, Zozo, but true courage is knowing that there are some things you must do, even if they make you feel afraid. What would you have me do, Master Necromancer? Do you see that nearby cave? It contains a monster. I want you to go in there and defeat it to help gain control of your fear. If you complete this first challenge, I'll give you a reward. I believe in myself. I can do it. Good. And you can take this bat to help you. It will freeze your opponents for three seconds. May it come in handy. I took the necromancer's bat and went into the cave. It was dark and scary, and I could feel myself getting nervous. But I took deep breaths and kept going. I needed to strengthen my courage to defeat Mr. Dark. The deeper parts of the cave weren't any better, only some lichen and mushrooms giving off faint light. Suddenly, a scary, growling soul eater leaped out of the darkness toward me, ready to attack. I stayed calm and hit the creature with my bat, studying it. I'd pass the test. Okay, now it's time to get out of here. On days 32 to 35, my new mentor rewarded me for passing the first challenge by giving me a potion of strength. I immediately drank it and felt myself getting bigger and tougher. This training was really paying off. I have to be at least twice the size I once was. This whole thing made me feel so happy, I decided I'd go back to my base and tell the mossy skeletons and Sally the skeleton horse about my victory. And on the way, I encountered the wither skeleton jockey that I'd met a few days before. Hey, jockey, have you had any second thoughts about coming to my base? Well, now that you mention it, I have been getting some eerie vibes lately. Maybe we should stick together after all. But those eerie vibes didn't come from nothing. Neither of us noticed it, but the day had gotten away from us. The sun was going down and the night was upon us. That's when Mr. Dark himself came creeping out of the trees. Ooh, new friends, I'll take you to Playland with me. We'll have so much fun. He grabbed the wither skeleton jockey with his long spindly arms. Zozo, help me, I'm being kidnapped. But I couldn't help him. Mr. Dark was too fast and too strong, and all I could do was run. My base may have been the only place that was safe at night. On the way back, I encountered an ancient spirit villager who started chasing me, and I was too afraid to even fight him. I just ran away. All that training, useless. I don't know if I'll ever be able to defeat Mr. Dark. On days 36 to 39, I woke up and took the jockey spider to the stable when I heard noise coming from my front gate. I made my way over to see a familiar face waiting outside of my base. It was the same zombie taiga who attacked my base and destroyed soul vulture and skeleton deer. This time, he's going down. I ran out ready to fight. This time, I had full iron armor so the zombie taiga's attacks weren't nearly as strong. What sorcery is this? Mr. Dark told me you'd be easy to defeat. 
This isn't fair. With the help of my new strength and the bat that the necromancer had given me, I defeated the zombie taiga and avenged my fallen friends. Speaking of friends, Sally the skeleton horse approached me with a wonderful idea. Zozo, we should make our way to the stone shores. I've heard that some of the friendlies over there have created some awesome upgrades. Oh really? Then there's no time to waste. We hightailed it over to the stone shores where we saw an innocent skeleton being hassled by an ogre. We couldn't let that stand. Get away from that skelly! Sally and I charged in, and that was enough to scare the ogre away. He seemed thankful and gave us two rewards. The knockback upgrade, which increased the power of my weapons, and a treasure map. You hear that, Sally? We can use this to search for buried treasure. Now that sounds like a cool adventure to me, Zozo. Let's do it. For days 40 to 43, Sally and I followed the map until we arrived in the warm, dusty badlands. We were getting a little nervous because it was almost nightfall. We were right about that, but we didn't consider that Mr. Dark might send his minions to do the job for him. Look out, Zozo! Some night apparitions are coming straight towards us! Sally was right! Three big, scary night apparitions, I pulled out my sword, now with increased knockback, and fought them off. They were tough, but luckily, Sally and I made a good team, and we were able to defeat two of the three. The last one escaped to fight another day. Let's keep going, Sally! According to this map, we're really close to finding the buried treasure. Soon enough, we found an area of the ground with a big red X marked on it. Don't they always say X marks the spot, Zozo? Let's start digging. We mined down into the ground until we found a buried chest. And inside, there were a whole bunch of rubies. This is awesome. I know exactly what I'm going to use them for. On days 44 to 49, I continued my work on the statue. It was really coming along now. Can you see what I'm making now? I bet you can't guess. But while I was working on my statue, I saw a trader on a horse making his way through the forest near my base and decided to strike up a conversation. Hey, Mr. Trader, got anything cool on offer? It's your lucky day, dear customer, because I'm actually doing a two-for-one special on netherite ingots today. It's a rare and very valuable material. Perfect for a skeleton dragon like you. That sounds so cool. How much? I only take payment in emeralds. But don't worry. If you haven't got any, you can always raid the emerald mines of Alonia near here. They got abandoned by the workers when the boss decided not to pay them enough. So all the emeralds were left for the taking. I really wanted those netherite ingots, even though I didn't really know what I'd use them for. So I journeyed to the mines and collected as many emeralds as I could from underground. Netherite city? Here I come! I traveled back to my base and made the trade. The trader gave me my two netherite ingots and rode off. Pleasure doing business with you, Zozo. But I didn't have long to enjoy my fancy new ingots. As night fell, the third and final night apparition came back for revenge, and I needed to run out beyond the wall to take it on. You guys don't know when to quit, do you? Soon enough, I defeated the night apparition, but it made me realize that my base needed better defenses. If these monsters and Mr. Dark mainly come out at night, maybe they hate the light. Perhaps adding some torches to my wall would help ward them off. On days 50 to 53, I realized something horrible. The night apparition attack had just been a distraction, while someone else had sneaked into the stable and kidnapped Sally the skeleton horse. I ran to my mentor, the necromancer, deep in the forest, and asked him where Mr. Dark's forces may have taken my best friend. Well, Zozo, I hate to tell you this, but it's likely that Mr. Dark's minions will be taking your friend to the Twisted Kingdom he calls Playland. But where can I find that? Even I don't know exactly, but my senses tell me that you should travel to the east. Your answers lay there. There was no time to waste. I didn't want Sally to get trapped in Playland, just like the other skeleton dragon's friend, so I immediately set off to the east, hoping to find her. But on my way, I was suddenly ambushed by a zombie spark ready to fight. But unlucky for him, I was ready to fight too. Nothing is going to stand in the way of me rescuing my friend. The zombie Spartan was tough, but I had the power of friendship on my side. It didn't take me long to strike him to submission with my enchanted sword.
In his defeat, the zombie Spartan drops something. Two Voidworm mandibles. Huh, I already have a Voidworm eye. I better take them. They might come in handy. On days 54 to 57, having defeated the zombie Spartan, I continued searching for Sally the skeleton horse, and my search soon led me to a deep cave. Suddenly, it felt like everything got much darker around me. I'm never going to let Mr. Dark take you to Playland, Sally. That isn't your choice, Zozo. I turned and saw one of the shadows in the cave moving with bright purple eyes. It was him, Mr. Dark, standing right behind me. Do you want to come to Playland with me now? What did you do with her? I swung my sword and Mr. Dark teleported out of the way, appearing right behind me. She's playing with my friends right now, but later she'll play with me. Do you want to play with us, Zozo? I tried to hit him again, but Mr. Dark was too fast for me. He hit me with one of his long spindly arms and knocked me up against the wall, knocking out half of my hearts in one strike. Hmm, still too weak. We'll play again when you're stronger, Zozo. Mark my words. And then he disappeared, leaving me with nothing. A silver lobo approached me out of the darkness, looking worried, and gave me some apples to replenish my hearts. Thanks, Silver Lobo, you saved my life here. The Lobo told me about a secret room further into the cave where I might find some vital information. I went deeper into the cave, feeling around on the wall until I felt a button and pressed it, opening a secret door. There was blue fire torches on the wall and an old map left on the table with some locations marked. They must be keeping Sally at one of these locations. On days 58 through 62, I decided I needed to become stronger before I could find the location where they were keeping Sally. First, I went to the diamond mine the Silver Lobo told me about and took the old elevator down. I quickly found some diamonds near the entrance and started mining. I then saw what looked like an old abandoned mining camp. A chest inside of it had a book with the unbreakable enchantment. I don't think whoever owned this camp would mind if I used the crafting table to make my gear. I made myself a diamond sword and a diamond chest plate to match. I used the nearby anvil to put the unbreakable enchantment on my chest plate. Now this is one of the most powerful pieces of armor around. After that, I returned to my base to continue work on my statue. It's really coming along nicely now. I even got to use all those rubies that Sally and I collected, but I could use some more materials. I went out into the forest to hunt, but in the process, I found something remarkable, a magical, enchanted halo. I decided to try it on and immediately felt its magic empower me. I got stronger and healthier, going up to 14 hearts. Whoa, talk about a functional headwear. As I continued hunting in the forest, I stumbled upon a spider nest. I saw the same gremlin from before, stuck in their webs calling for help. The spiders noticed me and charged towards me. This was the perfect opportunity to test out my new gear, but they were no match for my diamond sword. After I dealt with them, I cut the web holding the gremlin and he fell down. He thanked me for saving him again and ran off into the forest. Next time I take on Mr. Dark, he's in trouble. I went back to my base, feeling a lot more confident, and found that a huge bone serpent was waiting for me. But don't worry, he was friendly. So, you're the skeleton dragon I've been hearing about. I heard something about this friend of yours. A skeleton horse? You want to find her? I recommend you look for an abandoned house on the plains. Finally, a break in the case. You're a lifesaver, Bone Serpent. Literally. Want to stay at my base? Well, since you're offering, why not? I built a new room with a pool where the Bone Serpent can stay. But by then, it was already nighttime. Mr. Dark would be on the prowl. I'd go find Sally first thing in the morning. On day 63 through 66, I was preparing to go on a rescue mission for Sally. But before I could leave, my mentor, the Necromancer, arrived to give me a gift. Zozo, I wanted to give you a gift before you went on your quest. Mr. Dark is a mutant Enderman, and this dagger will do extra damage against Endermen. But be warned, it'll be incredibly weak against anything that isn't an Enderman. Thank you, Master Necromancer. These will come in handy. I left my base, passed through the forest, and ventured out onto the plains. This was the exact direction that the Bone Serpent told me to go in. That's when I ran into a group of zombies and decided to test my dagger on them, and it did almost no damage. Wow, Master Necromancer was right. This dagger is useless against things that aren't Endermen. Instead, I pulled out my diamond sword and easily defeated the zombie horde before moving on with my quest. I got distracted again when I saw a villager, dressed like a craftsman standing next to a burning house. He looked like he needed help. Hey, mister, I'm Zozo. Can I give you a hand? 
Yes, please! My wife is trapped in that burning building, and I'm too old to rescue her myself! Please help me! I ran into the burning building and found the craftsman's wife waiting inside! Thanks to my training from the necromancer, I was able to stay cool under pressure and lay the craftsman's wife safely back out! He was delighted to see her! Thank you, Zozo! I owe you one for this, and I always repay my debts! On days 67 through 70, I arrived at the abandoned house in the plains where I figured they must be holding Sally. This place looks so spooky, but I need to do the right thing, just like my mentor taught me. I carefully entered the house, trying not to be detected. I noticed that there was a broken end portal inside. Huh, that's weird. But I was quickly distracted by the sounds coming from upstairs. I drew my sword and ran upstairs, seeing Sally the skeleton horse locked in one of the rooms. Don't worry, Sally, I'm here to help. Wait, Zozo, it's a trap. Three Endermen suddenly appeared all around me. I tried to fight back, but I wasn't fast enough. They kept teleporting and attacking me back. Little by little, I was backed into the corner. It looked like I was a goner until I saw something on the floor. Is that a potion of fortitude? It was. I quickly grabbed it and drank it, and it made me tough enough to collect my thoughts, remembering the gift from my mentor. I pulled out the dagger and charged in. He was definitely right about its strength against Enderman, because soon enough, all three were defeated, although I barely survived that. I went to free Sally from the locked room. We celebrated for a moment in the room before I let her out and headed towards home. Let's go and rest, Sally. I've missed you. I shared some of my apples with Sally as we walked home, happy to finally be reunited. On day 71 to 74, with Sally's help, I invited more skeleton horses to my base and let them stay in my stable. Though I had to take time to expand the stable so everyone could fit inside. Let me know if it gets too cramped in there. After I'd finished my renovations, I decided to journey down into the diamond mine again and collect more, you guessed it, diamonds. When I returned to my base, I used those diamonds to complete my set of diamond armor and enchant it with the protection enchantment to help improve my chances in an intense fight. When the armor was done, I noticed that I received a letter. Oh, it's the craftsman whose wife I saved from that burning house. He says he wants to meet me in the tavern of a nearby village. That's so exciting! On day 75 to 78, I did as the letter said and traveled to the nearby village. I found the craftsman waiting for me in the village tavern, just like he promised. Good to see you again, Zozo. After what you did, I've been thinking about a way to repair you. And while I'm not a rich man, as a craftsman, I can give you an idea of mine. If you're able to combine two netherite ingots, two void worm mandibles, and one void worm eye, you could create a dimensional carver, a special pickaxe that can teleport you between locations. Wait, I have all of those materials. That's incredible. I could build one right now. Thank you, Mr. Craftsman. I made my way over to a nearby crafting bench and made myself a dimensional carver and gave it a practice swing. Boom! I was teleported to the village outskirts with a group of great beasts charging at me. Uh-oh, better get out of here. I swung the dimensional carver again and boom, I was back in my base. Wow, this tool is amazing. Though I'll save it for emergencies in the future. On days 79 through 84, I started building a new storage shed for extra supplies in my base. You never know when you'll need the extra storage space. Then I made a full set of armor for Sally so she could be better protected when she's wandering through the forest. This is great, Zozo. Thank you. But then I was running low on materials, especially stone and wood. So I decided to head out into the forest to cut down some trees and mine some more stone. While I was mining and lumberjacking, a passing mage noticed me and approached. Excuse me, young skeleton dragon, but would you happen to be Zozo? That depends. Do you work for Mr. Dark? Well, I used to, and there's something I want to get off my chest. You have to understand, Mr. Dark is pure evil. If ever there was good in him, it's gone now. You cannot reason with him. You cannot talk to him. The only joy he takes is in making others unhappy. So when you're dealing with him, just be careful. He is not to be messed with. And with that, the mage left. Guess that's my daily dose of nightmare fuel. On days 85 to 89, I returned to my base from the forest in the late evening, only to find out that the worst had happened. Mr. Dark was attacking my base with a whole gang of soul eaters. Look friends, Zozo is back. He's here to join our little playtime. I want nothing to do with you or your deranged games. 
I just want you to stop bothering everybody. Hmm, yes, we could do that. Or we could play catch. Soul Eater, throw! One of the Soul Eaters pulled out a javelin and threw it at me. But then something strange happened. Rather than losing heart, I started to get bigger and stronger. I'd become an evolved skeleton dragon, reaching my full size and going up 20 hearts. Whoa, I guess all that training is finally paying off. Wanna 1v1 me, Mr. Dark? Why should I have all the fun? My friends want to play with you too. Play with him, Soul Eaters. Mr. Dark vanished again, and the Soul Eaters ran towards me. With my new size and power, it didn't take me long to defeat them, which made me even more frustrated that I couldn't have taken on Mr. Dark there and then. Instead, I had to increase the size of my bedroom. A bigger skeleton dragon needs a bigger place to live. On days 90 to 94, I finally finished my statue. It's a giant cool skull statue showing how we skeletons stuck together and stood against the evil of Mr. Dark and his minions. Did you guess what it was before I just told you? Let me know down in the comments. Once the statue was finally done, I decided I'd give some extra training to my best friend, Sally the Skeleton Horse. We trained together on the base grounds by play fighting until she upgraded and became bigger and stronger. It feels so good to be powerful enough to fend for myself. Thanks, Zozo. I never would have gotten this far without you, Sally. And after training, Sally took me to her brewing station she had set up to make a bunch of healing potions. You never know when these will come in handy. On day 95 to day 97, I met with the necromancer in the forest. He had some more valuable advice for me. Zozo, I've heard of the location of a cabin in these woods, once owned by a person who was researching Mr. Dark. You might be able to find some valuable information there. That definitely seemed like a good lead, so I started searching the woods until I found a run-down old cabin. On the inside, I found a dusty old book inside a chest. Oh, I wonder what secret knowledge is inside. But I didn't have time to read it just yet. Suddenly, the cabin was under attack by a gang of fire elementals who'd come to burn down the cabin. I was lucky to have my diamond armor or I would have been burned up too. Okay, fire elementals, let's go. I took them on with my diamond sword and defeated them one by one, only getting a little burnt in the process. Great, now I can finally read this book. The book was filled with frantic notes, including a part that read, Mr. Dark, that maniac, he calls it Playland, but it's nothing like that. There's only death there. It's the end, nothing but the end. Of course, that explains the broken end portal too. Mr. Dark's Playland is actually the end. On day 98, I prepared the final enchantments for my weapons and armor and met with Sally one last time. She was nice enough to give me some more apples for the trip. I'm going to take on Mr. Dark. I discovered that he's hiding in the end. And without an end portal, I can use my dimensional carver to get there. You're not going alone, Zozo. I'm coming with you. But Sally. But nothing. I saved your butt the first time you came here. And you think I'm going to let you wander right into Mr. Dark's base? Alone? We started this together. And we're going to finish it together, too. Well, when you put it like that, I can't exactly say no, can I? But I can say that if you want more exciting adventures like this, you should subscribe to Zozo and find more of our videos by searching ZOZO -Zo on YouTube. I'll really appreciate it. On day 99, Sally and I were ready to take the fight to Mr. Dark and free everyone that was still trapped in Playland. Let's do this, Zozo. Let's make it so the people of this world never have to fear the night again. That's what I'm talking about, Sally. Sally stood close to me, and I used the dimensional carver to teleport us all the way to the end so we could storm Playland together. But as soon as we arrived, we were immediately surrounded by a gang of Endermen. I immediately regret this decision. Yeah, me too. I pulled out my handy dagger, ready to fight off the Endermen, when I realized that they weren't here for me. They surrounded Sally, too fast for me to stop them, and grabbed her. They teleported away, taking Sally with them to who knows where. Sally, no! I knew why they'd done it. They were working for Mr. Dark, and Mr. Dark wanted me to face him alone. On day 100, I walked deeper into the end alone, looking for Mr. Dark. He didn't seem to be anywhere around here. That's when I noticed a cage containing a skeleton dragon just like me. I'd finally found him. Don't worry, fellow draggy. I'll get you out of here. I heard an evil laugh behind me, and Mr. Dark appeared. You've come to play with me at long last. 
I knew you would in the end, little one. I'm not so little anymore. I pulled out my dagger and turned to attack Mr. Dark, but he teleported out of the way and hit me again. He was even stronger than I remembered. Thankfully, I had a spare potion of healing to take to offset the damage. Play along, Zozo. It's no fun if you don't play. I tried to attack him again, but it was like fighting smoke. Every time I went for him, he teleported out of the way and attacked me back. It felt like all of my training was for nothing against him. You don't play fair, Mr. Dark. That's because it's no fun to play like that. And I'm sorry, Zozo, but you're starting to feel awfully boring to me. I looked behind me and saw that a giant chasm had opened up in the ground behind me. It was so dark down there, I didn't even know if there was a bottom. You'll find more friends down there, Zozo. You'll never want to leave. <laughs> While Mr. Dark was focused on me, I saw a figure charging up behind him. It was Sally, the skeleton horse. And still, Mr. Dark hadn't even noticed her. Any last words before you go into the dark, Zozo? Yeah. Playtime's over! What? Sally the Skeleton Horse charged into Mr. Dark and knocked him into the bottomless pit! He no! screamed and fell, never to be seen again! Can't say I'm gonna miss that creep. Let's save the prisoners and get out of here, Zozo. You know, that sounds good to me. On day one, I spawned in and ate my way out of a giant pumpkin as a fat dragon with ten hearts! It looks like I'm way chunkier than the average dragon. It's okay though, because it's what's on the inside that counts. But my thoughts were interrupted by a huge fireball hitting the ground next to me. I managed to dodge it just in time and looked up to see a huge fire dragon floating in the sky above me. Sup, Tubby? What are you doing on my turf? You know this is Chad's place. Who? Chad's the best. Hey, don't call me mean names. And who's this Chad guy? I'm Chad and I rule. And when I'm flying around here, taking selfies for my red hot fire dragon insta, I don't want your goofy butt sitting in my background, killing my vibe. But, but, you can't just call me names and kick me out. Uh, yeah I can. I'm Chad the fire dragon. I'm number one. You aren't the first loser I've chased out of here, and you won't be the last, baby. It's fire time! Chad the fire dragon blasted another fireball at me. I dodged again in the nick of time and flapped my wings, flying off into the air and escaping Chad's fire. Yeah, that's right. You better run. Nobody messes with Chad. <sighs> when I'd escaped Chad, I landed for a bit to breathe and calm myself down. That guy was a major jerk. Why would you be mean to someone just because of what they look like? He must be evil. My thoughts were interrupted by a big angry dread beast who thought I looked like a filling snack. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. All I could do was fly off before the dread beast pounced at me. This world doesn't seem too kind. I need to make things better around here before everyone hates on each other. On day two, I landed somewhere that looked a little safer. At least here, nobody would start attacking me for no reason. I need a roof over my head before I can do anything else. Maybe it's time to build myself a fat dragon base. I used some of my natural dragon strength to break down a few trees. It wasn't long before I had enough wood to make myself a wooden pickaxe and a crafting table. Then I used my wooden pickaxe to dig up some stone and create a stone sword and a stone pickaxe. This is exactly what I need to build a base. But first, I need to get myself a sweet treat. I've had a hard couple of days. I've earned it. I flew off to a nearby area and found a delicious looking cake just laying around. The perfect treat. But then, a dread ghoul jumped out of the shadows and started laughing. <laughs> My fiendish plan worked. I knew that a cake would attract a perfect fat little victim, and I was right. Oh, come on. Why is everyone here so judgmental? It's the way of the world, fat dragon. And now you've fallen for my trap. You're all mine. But before the dread ghoul could pounce, I flew away again, all the way back to my base to enjoy my cake. Wait, I got so distracted by the cake that I didn't even start my base. When I landed, I used my stone pickaxe and collected more resources and started building myself a basic base. At least it would give me somewhere to stay at the end of the day. Mm, I should work on a kitchen next. On day three, I decided that I needed to make my base a little bigger. 
I wasn't the tiniest dragon out there after all, and I needed the base to be roomy to be comfortable in it. So I flew off to a new location to collect more resources. Of course, it wasn't going to be as easy as I'd hoped, because nothing seems to be easy around here. The second I landed, there was an angry looking dread knight waiting for me. Vest, thou art a hefty dragon forsooth. Alec, tis a battle. A battle, good sir. I literally don't understand anything you're saying, but I still feel like you're being mean to me. Thou art correct. Battle me, knave. I was really upset about being called mean names again. Probably. So this time, I was ready to engage in battle. I attacked him with my stone sword until the Dread Knight gave up and moved away. Thou doth won this time, dragon. But next time, I will have my revenge. Forsooth. Stop saying forsooth. It doesn't make you sound cool or smart. It's just weird. With that, the Dread Knight ran away. Moments later, a different figure emerged. A big black hippogriff. Oh no. Are you going to say mean things about my weight too? What? Heavens no. I'd never dream of judging someone based on their appearance. That's a total Chad the Dragon move. I'm Buck. Buck the Hippogriff. Wait, Chad the Dragon? You know that guy? Huh, I wish I didn't. He's so conceited. If he was made of cake, he'd probably eat himself. Talk about a selfish meanie. Oh, speaking of cake, I have some back at my base. Come join me. We can share it together. I'm Zozo, by the way. Finally, someone kind around here. You seem hungry already. I'll let you have some of my fish. And let's go, Zozo. I'd made my first friend, and we started back to my base. Things were finally looking up for me. From day four to day five, I returned to my base with Buck the Hippogriff. It felt nice to have someone who was so kind in a world that had been so mean to me. Let's build you a room, Buck. Something that really suits your awesome personality. You're too kind, Zozo. You were kind to me first. This is just me getting even. I started expanding my base, creating a nice new room for Buck to stay in. I even made it with an open roof so he could fly out and explore anytime he wanted. This is an awesome room, Zozo. I'm so happy that I met you. You're the coolest fat dragon I've ever seen. You're doing a lot to help boost my confidence, Buck. I love it. But our wholesome friendship moment was interrupted by a bunch of death worms slithering out of the ground towards me. Oh no, I need to do something about this before it ruins my whole base. I ran in and started battling the death worms. Lucky for me, in the battle of worms versus dragons, dragons normally win. And this was no exception. And once the worms were defeated, they dropped some delicious apples onto the ground. Huh, apples in worms. It doesn't normally go that way around. I stashed the apples into my inventory and went back to my base where Buck the Hippogriff and I could hang out. With the death worms taken care of, I could work on expanding and improving my base. Yes. First, I need to make sure I have a fixed source of food, breakfast especially. I'd love some eggs. That's why I built a coop and some fences, then collected a few chickens and let them live inside. Free range, of course, because that's the kindest way to do it. It'll make the eggs taste better, too. But while I was out searching for more chickens to add to my teeny tiny chicken farm, I saw the last thing I ever wanted to see, Chad the Fire Dragon. He was flying right above me, looking just as mean and arrogant as ever. Ugh, what are you doing here, chubby? Didn't the Chadmeister tell you that you need to get off the overworld? Maybe go to the nether. That's where all the other weird, ugly beasts hang out. <laughs> nice one, Chad. You can't nice one your own joke, Chad. It doesn't work like that. Chad can do anything that Chad likes. He's the best. I mean, I'm the best. Whatever. Look at what I can do. Suddenly, Chad started growing even bigger and stronger than before. He made even his old self look small. Oh no, you're so huge. How? I've been getting some extra reps in at the gym. It's making me real swole. You'd know this if you followed my fire insta. Like I said, instead, you're gonna deal with my fire. Fire! Chad blasted an even bigger fireball at me. There was no way I could fight him like this. I needed to just get out of here. I flew off as fast as I could, just hoping that Chad wouldn't follow me. Getting rid of him was going to be a lot harder than I thought. From day 9 to day 10, I sat in my room at my base, feeling terrible about all the things Chad said to me and how much stronger he was than me. How can I ever expect to stop him from being so horrible to everyone if I can't even stop him from being horrible to me? Buck the Hippogriff seemed to sense that I was upset and came in to comfort me. Zozo, I'm so sorry about all those terrible things that Chad said to you. For what it's worth, he's only like that because deep down, he's so insecure about himself. He wishes he had the kind of confidence you have. Those are kind words, Buck, and they do make me feel a little better. I just feel bad that I wasn't able to defeat him. 
Maybe what you need is a little inspiration. Go look out into the yard and see a little something I've been working on for you. I ran outside and saw that Buck had been working on a statue. It looked incredible, but it was early enough that I couldn't quite tell what it was yet. Wow, this is amazing. What do you think it's gonna be when it's done? Let me know down in the comments. Buck came up to me again. Amazing work, Buck. I love the statue. What's it going to be? I couldn't give that away. And besides, there's something else you should see. I built you a base upgrade. I looked back at my base and saw that Buck had built me a storage room. The perfect place to store all of our weapons and supplies. Buck, you're the best friend I've ever had. From day 11 to day 12, I decided it was time to rest and recover from the stressful last few days. After all, it's important to take care of yourself and take time off now and then. But while I was sleeping, I started having the strangest dreams. I dreamed of how Chad the Fire Dragon was first created. He crawled out of lava, deep underground, a dragon of pure fire. Whoa, I'm a dragon of pure fire. This is crazy. I think I'm gonna call myself Chad. Yeah, that feels like a good name for me. But everyone was afraid of Chad because he was so big and so dangerous because of his fire powers. Chad felt bad about everyone being afraid of him. So to cover up how bad he felt, he decided to pretend he was confident in a completely over the top way. The Chadster's number one. Ugh. But because Chad's confidence wasn't real, he could only protect it one way, by being mean to others, putting them down to make himself feel better. Everyone is dumb and ugly except me. <laughs> oh yeah, Chad is awesome. And I'm Chad, baby. Chad developed such a reputation for being rude and mean, nobody would tell him to stop. And as the years went on, he only got more powerful. Needless to say, it was a really weird dream, but I definitely felt like I knew more about Chad afterwards. I just wish I knew how I could use it against him. From day 13 to day 15, I decided I needed to settle a few old scores to improve my confidence. This fat dragon was through with running away. That's why I flew back to where it all started, to face the dread beast that thought I was an easy snack. Now I was going to show him that fighting me was going to be anything but easy. I landed right next to the dread beast, ready to battle, with the stone sword at the ready. Let's go, dread beast. We'll see who's really feeling the dread when I'm done. The dread beast ran at me, but I didn't budge. I fought back. And this time, I won! And with the XP I got from winning, I leveled up into a bigger, tougher, fatter dragon! Chad is gonna think twice about messing with me now! I've got an entire 30 hearts and a brand new weapon, Dragon Claws! I took to the skies, happier than I'd felt in a long time! From day 16 to day 19, feeling encouraged by all my progress lately, I decided it was time to treat myself to a gear upgrade. I found a nearby mine and went underground, digging until I found some iron ore. Perfect, this is exactly what I needed. But I wasn't alone in the mine because the perfect opposite of a fat dragon was down there waiting for me, a bunch of human skeletons. At least they don't have enough tongue to make any mean jokes about me. I defeated the skeletons, then used my iron ore to smelt and craft an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Looks like my fighting and mining skills have just leveled up. Chad is gonna feel so jealous about this when he finds out. With all my new gear, I went back to my base, feeling better than ever. From day 20 to day 22, I was rudely awakened by Buck storming into the room. Zozo, Zozo, you need to wake up right now. Something terrible is happening. Terrible? Oh no, that doesn't sound good. Quite the opposite, actually. It's terrible. Chad, the fire dragon is waiting for you outside. I think he wants to fight. I got up and ran outside as quickly as I could. And just like Buck had told me, Chad the Fire Dragon was waiting. Hey, Jabroni, it's the Chadmeister, Chad Gannon, the Central African nation of Chad. And as usual, I'm happy to hand you a big steaming plate of humiliation, baby. You may be a Fire Dragon, Chad, but I think you're just full of hot air. Are you really saying all this stuff about yourself because you believe it or because you want to believe it? Ooh, look at you, Mr. Big Tubby Head Shrinker. You think you understand the Chadster's brain? The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. You could never even hope to understand what I'm about, and I'm actually super duper confident. You're just way too much of a loser to get that. 
Sounds like you're not that sure of yourself. I so am! Let's fight, doofus! We charged at each other and began battling. He blew fire at me, but with my new strength since our last battle, I was able to take the heat. That's when I showed him my new claws, swiping at him again and again. He seemed so shocked that I was really fighting back that he broke away from the fight and started to fly off. I didn't really want to fight you that time anyway. Smell you later, fat dragon. It wasn't exactly a true victory, but I'd seen the first crack in Chad's confidence. Maybe I can beat him after all. From day 23 to day 26, I decided that I needed to treat myself to a new enchantment for all my hard work, surviving my first true fight with Chad. Given how much he'd helped me so far, I asked Buck what he thought I should do. Seeing as you got yourself an iron sword a while back, maybe you should apply the sharpness enchantment. Who knows, it might even make your claws more powerful. That's a great idea, Buck. You're always looking out for me. On Buck's suggestion, I crafted and applied the sharpness enchantment. All my weapons were a lot more effective after that. From day 27 to day 31, I got more good news from Buck. Zozo, come take a look. I've been doing some more work on the statue, and I think you're going to love it. Ah, oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to see. I ran out and took a look at the statue. It wasn't done yet, but it was coming along so well. Buck really had a gift for making statues. This looks amazing, Buck. I can't wait to see what it'll be when it's done. That's actually something I wanted to talk to you about, Zozo. The statue is coming along great, but it needs something else. Think you can go get some for me? No problem, Buck. I'll set off immediately. Buck told me what he needed and sent me off to the west. I headed out with my iron pickaxe, ready to mine like my life depended on it. It didn't take me long to find the blocks that Buck needed, but there was a wither there waiting for me. Nothing is ever easy around here. I took a few wither skulls, but soon managed to use my claws to turn the tide of the battle. Once the wither was gone, I mined the blocks and went back to my base. Buck was waiting for me. Here, Buck, take these. Thanks, Zozo. This is exactly what I needed. From day 32 to day 35, I went out exploring again, wanting to increase my strength and confidence. If there were any quests for me to take, I'd be happy to take them. But my confidence was shaken a little by a huge creeper spider suddenly skittering towards me. This is not how I wanted to spend today. I ran away as the creeper spider exploded, taking out a bunch of blocks beneath it, but thankfully not me. Creepers are one of those problems that take care of themselves. While I was wandering around the explosion scarred area, I saw another strange creature, a rabbit wolf, hopping around and looking worried. Are you okay, Miss Rabbit Wolf? The truth is, no, things are awful right now. Awful? Oh no, what happened? Is there any way I could help? My friend, the rabbit, was kidnapped by the Crimson Phantom. He's a local weirdo who thinks he's a super villain. And if we don't save the rabbit soon, who knows what will happen? We'll never have to find out. Wait here, I'm gonna go save your rabbit friend. And with that, I flew off, ready to become a hero. From day 36 to day 39, I arrived at the location where the wannabe supervillain, the Crimson Phantom, was holding the rabbit. He was every bit as weird as the wolf rabbit had told me. <laughs> it is I, the Crimson Phantom, the Lord of Darkness. I am the most powerful and the evil villain in the overworld, and nothing will stop me from taking control. I am number one. But isn't Chad the fire dragon number one? Oh no, Chad, is he here? No, no, he's not here. I was just talking figuratively. Phew, that's a relief. Almost lost my cool there. Hearing all of that gave me an idea. The Crimson Phantom may not be afraid of me, but he was definitely afraid of our mutual enemy, Chad the fire dragon. Maybe Chad can be useful for once. From day 40 to day 43, I flew out towards the Crimson Phantom and the captured rabbit, trying to look as intimidating as possible. Both of them turned to look at me as I approached. Be gone, fat dragon, for I am the Crimson Phantom, the vilest villain in all of the overworld, and this rabbit belongs to me. Fool, I work for his Chadness, Chad the Fire Dragon, and he is extremely displeased that you're out here tarnishing his rad name. Oh no, oh no, 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 please, please tell his Chadness I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any offense. I'll do whatever he wants, I promise. You'll give up the rabbit and let her go. His Chadness requests your presence. Of course, I'll... Wait, that dragon, 
Chad's been making fun of you on his Dragon Insta for weeks now. You're not with him. You're trying to trick me. Ah, you can't blame me for trying. With my plan foiled, I attacked the Crimson Phantom with my powerful claws. Despite all his bragging, he was one of the easiest enemies I'd ever defeated. You saved me. Thank you so much. I was worried I'd never get away from that awful villain. Don't thank me, Rabbit. You've got a friend who cares a lot about you. As if on cue, the Rabbit Wolf hopped in. Thank you for all you've done, Zozo. Here, take this potion of swiftness. It's the least I could do. You're a true hero. Oh, stop it. You're gonna make me cry. From day 44 to day 49, I gave more materials to Buck the Black Hippogriff so he could continue work on the statue. Great job, Zozo! You're really pulling your weight with this project. I'll take that as a compliment, considering how much my weight is. I mean it, buddy. You're a kind and reliable person. Anyone would be lucky to have you as a friend. Thanks, Buck. Now I feel like a million bucks. There's only one me, Zozo. Just like there's only one you. That's deep. But you knew what I meant. I let Buck continue working on the statue and realized that I was hungry. After all the quests I'd been doing, I had really worked up an appetite. It was time to add something to the base in order to help out with that. A proper kitchen! I'd craft a couple of cooking services and shelves to store ingredients. That way, I'd be able to make the most nutritious meals when I was in the mood for food. It's like they always say, never trust a skinny cook and always trust a fat dragon cook. Once I had completed the kitchen, I went back to see how Buck was doing on the statue. It was starting to look even more like what it was supposed to be. I couldn't wait to see how it would look when it was done. From day 50 to day 53, I was minding my own business at the base when Chad the Fire Dragon decided to rear his big, overinflated head. Oh, hey, Chapster. Still your lame roly-poly self, I see. Lucky for you, the Chadmeister decided to take some time out of his busy Insta schedule to instigate a little one-on-one -on -one conflict. Leave me alone already, Chad. I'll fight if I have to, but I didn't wake up this morning choosing violence. Too bad, because Chad the Cool and Rad always chooses to dunk on losers. By the way, when I said one-on-one, -on -one, I meant one-on-several, because I've brought my fans with me. It was true. Chad had rolled up with a bunch of fire guardians who listened to everything he said. They must have been followers by nature. How is it fair to outnumber me, Chad? At least fight your own battles if you're gonna be a bully. Well, sorry. There's so much of you to go around that I thought I should bring more guys. Get up, boys. Chad's fire guardians tried to gang up on me, but I was a fighter now, so I shredded through them with my claws. I was so focused on the fight that I almost didn't see Chad and the other guardians kidnap Buck from the base. Zozo, win that fight and come save me. I know you can. Buck, how low does Chad want to go in order to ruin my life? I took down the rest of the attacking fire guardians like Buck said, and I felt my confidence rising. I grew larger and obtained 60 hearts. I could also breathe out a big blast of fire. Looks like Chad isn't the only one with fire around here. With that, I also set the front yard on fire. From day 54 to day 57, I spent some time putting out the fires left over from the attack on the base. They sure did set a big part of my base on fire, but it didn't bother me that much because I could easily extinguish it. Once I had extinguished the fire, I thought about the one thing I couldn't repair. I need to get Buck back. He always stuck up for me, so I want to do the same for him. I went to the desert to go visit Miss Rabbit Wolf. I knew a thing or two about friendship. And because I helped her rescue her friend not too long ago, she would probably help me rescue mine. I'm so sorry that Buck got taken away by Chad's henchmen. I know exactly how that feels. I want to do something about it, but I don't know where to begin. Why don't you try checking the selfies that Chad posts? There's got to be something in the background that could help you find out where he's taking Buck. That's a good idea. He posts pictures of where he is all the time. It should be easy to find his evil lair from that. You can turn his false confidence into a real weakness. Thanks, Rabbit Wolf. From day 58 to day 62, I went mining for diamonds so I could upgrade my tools. I'm a confident dragon, and I deserve to treat myself to nicer things. Of course, not everyone in the mine agreed with me on that point. There were a bunch of warped phantoms swarming around where I was trying to dig. I could use my fire breath to scatter them, but they'd always come back. This seems like more of a task for my claws. Can't a dragon mine in peace? Once I had cleared out all the warped phantoms, I was able to gather a good amount of diamonds from the cave. I crafted a diamond sword and a diamond pickaxe, both of which would come in handy when the time came for me to go rescue Buck from the clutches of Chad. 
From day 63 to day 66, I was looking at the unfinished statue and feeling sad that Bub couldn't be here. The two of us had been working together on the statue for a long time now, and seeing that it was unfinished was a reminder that without him, I'd never see what the statue could become. I thought about working on it myself, but that wouldn't do any good. Buck is counting on me to rescue him from Chad. I couldn't back down from facing that terrible bully. For now, the statue needs to wait. Hang on, Buck. I'm gonna find you, wherever you are. And if you want to find more of my awesome adventures, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you'll always be able to. From day 67 to day 70, I found a place that looked a lot like where Chad the Fire Dragon took many of his selfies. The Crimson Gardens were definitely red, like one might expect for a fire dragon, and there also seemed to be a huge lair designed to show off. That's gotta be Chad's pad. As I approached, I noticed that there were a bunch of fire guardians hanging around outside. My guess had to be correct, since those mobs would do anything for Chad's attention, including trying to keep me out of Chad's pad. I knew I was looking at a fight if I tried to get past them. Hey, you guys, is my friend inside there? The fire guardian said nothing and charged me all at once. I knew fire breath wouldn't do any good against creatures of pure fire, so I stuck to melee attacks. Thanks to my increased health, even fighting this many fire guardians wasn't much of a problem. It was true that I had gotten even bigger and stronger since my other fight with Jad's minions. I'm not just fat, I'm large and in charge. I was able to battle my way through the inside of Chad's pad. I just knew my friend was in here somewhere. From day 71 to day 74, I explored Chad's pad and fought off more of the fire guardians as I did. This space is gigantic. Chad must really enjoy having a lot of space that he doesn't need all to himself. While I was sneaking around, I saw Chad. He must have been finished taking selfies in a nearby room. Oh yeah, Chad rules. The camera loves Chad and so does everyone else. And Chad, he seemed to be really into his routine at the moment and it felt awkward to interrupt him. I came here to rescue Buck, not to pick a fight. So I just let him continue bigging himself up. Of course, I couldn't help myself from sneaking some potions of healing from one of his pad's chests. He won't miss it, and besides, he's hurt me enough times that one little potion is the least of what he'd need to do to make up for it. From day 75 to day 78, I managed to find the dungeon where Chad had been keeping Buck. It was time for a good old fashioned prison break. Zozo, you made it. I always knew you had it in you, friend. Thanks, Buck. It was hard making it all the way here without your kind words, but I was still able to do it because I've got confidence in myself now. I used my fire breath to destroy the bars of the prison, setting Buck free. Nicely done. Now let's get out of here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who said you could leave? Chad didn't. And if Chad didn't, it doesn't matter who did. <laughs> Chad. Oh no, it was Chad. There was only one thing I could think of to make sure that Buck would be safe from this kidnapping bully jerk. Get out of here, Buck. I'll catch up with you after Chad and I have a talk. With that, Buck ran off, leaving me alone to take on Chad. <laughs> like Chad would talk to you for any reason other than reminding you that you're totally stupid looking. Actually, I meant talk as in fight. Let's work things out like dragons with our claws and fire breath. Can't get enough of Chad's fire breath? Okay, you asked for it. Chad breathed his fire blast at me, but I returned with my own. He was surprised that I could do what he did, but that made sense because he always underestimated me. We started to fight with our claws, and even more than the previous time I was holding my own. I got several good hits in on him before he started to show a little bit of nervousness. What's the matter, Chad? Not able to pretend as well as you normally do? As if Chad needs to pretend. I'm the real deal, Lamo. Check this out. From day 79 to day 84, Chad flexed his dragon muscles and totally hulked out into a super beast of a dragon. Oh yeah, Chad was already the best, but now you can say hello to the even better super mega ultra deluxe Chad Meister Supreme. Yikes, I didn't expect he'd have another form. Chad totally could have beaten you in his regular form. Chad just didn't feel like it. Right, so he transformed for absolutely no reason at all. I'm really not sure I believe you, but I'm also really afraid of your new form. I ran away as fast as I could. Behind me, I could hear Chad laughing and calling me more mean names. We would see who would be laughing the next time we met, but this time it was definitely Chad who would be laughing. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to base and found that Buck had already made his way back there before me. I was really glad to see him home. The base had not felt the same without him. 
Did I miss anything, Zozo? I was gone for a long time at Chad's pad. That fire dragon was so annoying and talking about himself the whole time. I'm really glad to be back. I'm glad to hear it, Buck. Sorry you had to go through all that. It wasn't all bad. I did manage to swipe some relaxation supplies from Chad's relaxation room. I bet we could turn these into a room of our own. That sounds awesome. I love relaxation. I got to work on upgrading the base with a brand new relaxation room. Well, Buck chose to make up for lost time and work on the base's statue. I made sure to put all the right details into the relaxation room, including lots of couches for Buck and I to lounge around on. I bet both of us will really appreciate the work I've done on this room after Buck is done putting together that statue. When I was done with the relaxation room, I went to see the statue and found that it looked absolutely incredible. It was only a statue of me, but I never looked at myself so proudly before. Remember how you feel about yourself at this moment, Zozo. That confidence in who you are, recognizing your own best qualities, is the key to defeating Chad. I did almost have him last time, but he's got this new, super duper form now, and I think he's gonna knock me out the next time I see him. In that case, you just take what you already like about yourself and make it even more powerful. There's a spell you can cast that will bring your inner strength to the surface. Show him who you really are! From day 90 to day 94, I sought out the Book of Spells, which was said to contain a spell that would bring my inner strength to the surface. It was located inside of a deep cave that was full of wither spiders. There was a time not so long ago that I wouldn't have dared to fight for myself, especially against such powerful mobs. But if what Buck said about this spell was true, then I couldn't wait to get my inner strength on. I'm becoming more like who I want to be every single day, and there's nothing that some bully can say that would make me feel like I'm less than that. The wither spiders had powerful attacks and could shoot deadly wither skulls, but with my chubby body and huge amount of hearts, I could withstand equally huge amounts of damage. Big is beautiful! I burned the spiders away with my fire breath and found my way to the Book of Spells. This must be the right one. I'll read it when I get back home. From day 95 to day 97, I was back at base, preparing for my showdown with Chad. I was determined to use everything that I had in order to win this fight and overcome that bully once and for all. I knew that I'd be having the fight at his place, so instead of doing any sort of upgrades on my base, I focused on what I would need to do to fight at my best. Potions are the way to go. I can drink a lot of those at once to give myself an advantage. First up was a standard potion of strength to increase the damage of my claws attacks. Second, I chose a potion of regeneration so I could get even more use out of my high amount of hearts. And the third potion that I picked was a potion of fire resistance. Chad is always bragging about his fire, but this should take the heat off of me. On day 98, I decided to relax so that I wouldn't stress out too much about the impending fight I was going to have with Chad. I couldn't let him get into my head, so I made sure to fill my brain with fun and positive feelings. And if you want to feel fun and positive too, you should type ZOZO -Zo into the search bar so you can find more of my videos. Also, while it's just us relaxing, go ahead and leave a comment about what I should be next. On day 99, it was time to settle my score with Chad once and for all time. I walked through the Crimson Gardens and straight inside Chad's pad. That mean and nasty fire dragon himself was lying in wait, and he was still in his tricked out new form. Back for more, you little dragon tender? Chad is better than Chad has ever been. This new form is totally awesome and definitely better than anything you could do. I now understand why you decided to take that form, Chad. Cause I'm a beast like that? No, it's because you have something to prove. You may have scared everybody else, but I was able to rattle that fake confidence of yours. You're the one who has actually scared Chad. What? No, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Chad is the man, or the dragon man. Actually, I'm just a dragon. Yes, and I'm just a fat dragon who's got inner strength. I downed my potion and used the book of spells to cast the spell of power and unleash my inner strength. My heart rose to 100 and I now had a mighty tail slap attack. Ready to throw down, Chad. Chad is having second thoughts. I mean, now Chad's the best. Chad will take you on in any form, Tubbo. The fight began, and I whipped him with my new tail slap. He tried his fire breath, of course, but I was resistance. Your fire can't hurt me anymore, and neither can your words. I gave him serious claw strikes and even more tail slaps, then I unleashed my own fire breath. No way. You can't be fire. Chad is fire. Chad is fire as fire. Not anymore. Then I tail slapped Chad one more time, and he was done bothering me. 
On day 100, I was once again relaxing at the base with Buck the Black Hippogriff. Chad won't bother me or anyone again. I really taught him a lesson. You sure did stand up for yourself, Zozo. And you never let anyone tell you who you should be or how you should look. You said it, Buck. I'm the best at being me, and that's what counts more than anything else.